Fox struck midnight for the Cinderella teams from Utah and Air Force. The Falcons could not stop the Miners' power game inside as Antonio Davis scored 10, and Marlon Maxey came off the bench with some thunderous dunks. Meanwhile, the Bo's Troy Bow got the Rainbow Warriors off and running with a transition game against Utah, and Terry Houston scored 21 to set up tonight's shootout in the West Texas town of El Paso. Welcome to the Special Event Center here in El Paso, Texas, the home court for the UTEP Miners. Now, historically, the home court has not been kind to the host team here in the Western Athletic Conference Tournament, but tonight, the Miners hope to change some history against the Rainbow Warriors from the University of Hawaii. The Warriors coming in here hoping to pick up their first conference championship in the history of that program. Well, hello again, everybody, and welcome to WAC Basketball Championship Game tonight here on TSI Sports. Carl Larkey along with Irv Brown and Irv. The pretenders have all gone home. Only two contenders left, and they really match up very well. Two physical ball clubs. Oh, no question about it. I'm looking forward to it. I think they're going to go out and really work very, very hard. A lot at stake. The winner goes on. He's assured of an NCAA berth. What about the loser? Nothing can be taken for granted the way the computer works, the way things happen in a meeting. You've got to win this thing. If you lose, you don't know what's going to happen. Now, when we look back on the season between these two ball clubs, Hawaii swept the season series, took both ball games, and in the last meeting down here in El Paso, about two weeks ago, they used a zone defense in the second half that put the Miners into the twilight zone. You know, they used that 2-3 yesterday against Utah. I really believe that that has been a very effective weapon for Riley Wallace. If you're going to go out there and keep them from digging in with that 2-3, you got a chance to win. The other thing that has to happen for Hawaii, in my opinion, is Terry Houston has got to get Greg Foster in foul trouble. He's very quick. Foster tries to block every shot. That could be very, very important. Now, looking at it from UTEP's standpoint, how do they stop Terry Houston? He's had some big games against the Miners this year. Well, once again, you know, uh, don't feel sorry for the Miners because that front line to me is scary. They've got some very good ball players, and they'll bring Maxie and Van Dyke off the bench. So they're very capable of getting the job done. This thing could go down to the wire. Uh, the crowd should get very, very much involved. I just think there's a lot at stake. Another interesting element for the Hawaii Rainbows is the play of Chris Ga Gaines, their fine senior guard out of Iowa. He is their leading scorer at 18 points per game, but last night got shut down. A five points is a season low. Utah held him to it last night. They've got to get big point production out of him. Talked to him just a minute ago before we went on the air, and I asked him, how are your legs? Because he's looked very tired to me. He says, I feel better than I have in a long time. He's got to come out and play. The guy is an, uh, an exceptional shooter. He's going to have to bury some tonight if they're going to have a chance. Experience should play a big factor. It could play a big factor here tonight. When you look at the records of these two ball clubs in tournament play, this 
is the sixth time that the UTEP Miners have made it to the championship ball game, but uh, for the Hawaii Rainbows, this is the first time at the big dance. Yeah, and there's so much at stake. They are so excited in the islands. I talked to Riley Wallace just a while ago. You know, people are really revved up for this, and they know how much is at stake. And I just look for them to play very, very hard, but you made a very good point, Carl. This is an experienced UTEP team as far as tournament. They're used to winning. They're used to going on to the NCAA tournament. They got a lot to play for. Norm Ellenberger has a lot at stake. He wants a full-time job next year. Don Haskins has let him coach the ball club and stayed completely away. A lot of stake for the Miners. And the things uh, that the folks down here in El Paso keep reminding us about before the ball game tonight is the fact that, yeah, the uh, Miners have lost two ball games to the Rainbows so far this season, but they have never lost three games to the same whack opponent in a single season. Yeah, that's, uh, that's something to think about. Oh, he's coming out, and you can hear how people are uh, reacting to the bows and everything. There's about four guys here from Hawaii. And there are a few <laughs> cheerleaders. And other than that, it's going to be all UTEP. I like the way you say that. How about you? Well, you better say it right. I got a lot of grief for that. <laughs> all right. Well, that's the setup here at the Special Event Center in El Paso, Texas. It should be a good one. A lot of pressure, a lot at stake as the Miners and the Bows play for a chance to move on to the NCAA tournament. When we come back, we'll introduce you to the cast of characters, the starting lineups for both ball clubs here on TSI Sports. Tonight's Western Athletic Conference Championship game between the UTEP Miners and the Hawaii Rainbows is brought to you by Coors Light. There's no slowing down with a silver bullet, the best light beer for a good long time. I like wheeling and dealing and a penthouse view. Dressing for success and knowing who is who. Bright lights. Fast lane, my big time career. Meetings of the board and cold Coors beer. If you like your beer fresh, pure, and natural, head for the Rockies on the original taste of Coors. Have an ice cold Coors with a friend of yours. Coors, the Rocky Mountain legend. One of the great advantages of doing business with a firm like Schwab is that you're dealing with professionals across the whole country. They're creating financial advantages for the individual investor. Many of our customers transfer their other brokerage accounts to Schwab because we make it easy. We help the customer complete the right form, they sign them, and we do the rest. It's that simple. Call today for free information about Schwab services, 800-445-3000. Tati says Peggy Rawson raised utility rates. That's a blatant lie. Peggy Rawson did more to lower electric rates for this community than any other single person. Tati has forgotten that he's there to serve our interests, not his interests. Peggy Rawson is an honest person with integrity and great commitment. She's exactly what we need. My name is Peggy Rawson. I didn't raise your electric rates. I don't support a state income tax, and I won't lie to you. I will work hard to represent your interests. Travis, he's the best. The real things what are a found. voice. Hello. Oh, Hi. When you found the real thing, you think he's like a cute person? Uh-huh. What I wouldn't give to meet a guy like him. Hey, Julie, want to ring up this Coca-Cola classic? Thank you. All set for the Miners and the Hawaii Rainbow Warriors in this, the Western Athletic Conference Championship Ball Game down here at the Special Event Center in El Paso, Texas. Not a sellout here tonight, but a good crowd on hand to watch the Miners 20 and 10 on the season take on the Bows, who are 23 and 8 overall in Western Athletic Conference regular season play. Both teams finished in a tie for third with records of 10 and 6 and played a nip and tuck ba battle down here in El Paso couple of Saturdays ago, one of the best games that nobody got to see. We lost our satellite, and a great finish went for naught, at least for our television audience. But take my word for it, it was a great one. Yeah, you were here, you did see it. I did see it. Yeah. There are not too many people beat UTEP twice in one season, and you're making a very good point early. Can somebody come in and beat them three times? That is tough. What do you suppose is going through the minds of the Rainbow Warriors as they warm up right now down there at the south end of the building? Well, I, re I really believe they know how much is at stake. One team from the islands 
has ever gone to the NCAA playoff. Red Roach had a ball club. The NCAA guy inducted in the, the, the Ring of Fame and everything. And, and so they want to do this. They've done a great job. Riley Wallace a year ago had by far the most improved Division I team around. They know how tough UTEP can be. Against New Mexico, UTEP was sensational. Last night, a major league struggle. They barely win the ball game against an undermanned Air Force team. Throw all that out tonight. UTEP could come out and be like they were against New Mexico, and that is almost unbeatable. If the Bows are going to do it, they've got to do it now. Four seniors starting on this ball club here tonight. Terry Houston will graduate, as will Chris Gaines. Vince Smalls, also a senior, and Cliff Bobrin, a senior as well. So if they're going to get it done, this is the time to do it and try to win that championship for the first time in the history of their program. Well, you make a very good point. Good about ready for introduction. They have signed a guy by uh, the name of Marcus Nash. I like uh, out of L.A. City College, 6'5 swingman that will definitely help Riley. And some good talent coming back next year, but they're definitely going to have to rebuild after the loss of those four seniors who are really the foundation for a program that uh, built a 20-win season this year, the first time the Bows have won that many games since 1972, which incidentally was the last time Hawaii made an appearance and the only time they made an appearance in the NCAA tournament. So we're waiting right now for the introduction of the starting lineups here at the Special Event Center in El Paso, Texas. And we're all set to meet the players from both teams. For that, let's go to the public address announcer here in El Paso. This is in El Paso for tonight's 1990 Western Athletic Conference Basketball Tournament Championship game between the fourth seeded and host team, the UTEP Miners, with a 20 and 10 record, and the third seeded Hawaii Rainbow Warriors with a 23 and 8 record. And now, let's meet the team. First of all, for UTEP, at one forward tonight, wearing number 30 at 6'2", a 170-pound junior from El Paso, Texas, Mark McCall. forward for Hawaii this evening wearing number 34 at 6'4", a 210-pound senior from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, Vincent Smalls. At forward for UTEP tonight wearing number 34 at 6'10", a 220-pound senior from Oakland, California, Antonio Davis. forward for Hawaii this evening wearing number 25 at 6'7", a 225-pound senior from Miami, Florida, Terry Houston. At center tonight for UTEP wearing number 44 at 7 foot, a 230-pound senior from Oakland, California, Greg Foster. At center tonight for Hawaii wearing number 40 at 6'8", a 226-pound senior from Miami, Florida, Cliff Bobrun. At guard tonight for UTEP, wearing number 20 at 6'1", a 195-pound freshman from Landover, Maryland, Henry Hall. At guard for Hawaii this evening, wearing number 11 at 5'10", a 204-pound junior from Bridgehampton, New York, Troy Bow. And at guard for UTEP tonight, wearing number 13 at 5'10", a 170-pound junior from Lexington, Kentucky, Prince Stewart. At guard for Hawaii, wearing number 12 at 6'3", 190-pound senior from Waterloo, Iowa, Chris Gaines. UTEP is coached by Norm Ellenberger, now in his fourth year in El Paso. Hawaii is coached by Riley Wallace, now in his third year in Honolulu. Tonight's officials, Gordon Burke, Ivan Tate, and David Hall. Riley Wallace, 44 and 46 overall in his three years. Norm Ellenberger, 15 and 17 since taking over for Don Haskins. Back with the opening tip in just a moment here at the Special Event Center in El Paso. Has Mother Nature taken over your yard? Bring a sample into Cameron's. We'll show you the best solution for your problems. Cameron's has the best selection of fountains and statuary in El Paso. There's nothing quite as soothing as the sound of water, and we've got a hundred different ways to enjoy that sound. Come on by and see us at Cameron's. We think you'll be surprised. Houseplants are a great asset to any decor, and our Garden of Eden houseplant greenhouse is a real sight to see. Cameron's Nursery, located at 11355 Pelicano, just across from Sam. 
It's Big Eight, $10,000 grocery giveaway. No contest to enter, no games to play. Just check your cash register receipt every time you shop at Big Eight. If you find the free grocery coupon, you'll receive a $50 grocery gift certificate. In addition to our low prices, our great selection of fresh produce and quality trim right meats, we're giving you a chance to win in our $10,000 grocery giveaway. I always shop at Big Eight. the series 15 to 7 overall the miners 9 and 2 on their home court against the bows from the university of hawaii and just to recap this season series this year hawaii won it by seven out on the island and here at uh, utep just a couple of weeks ago it was a one point victory as hall and stewart combined for three of 20 shooting from the floor had a tough night the miners could not get inside against the rainbow zone defense here's troy bow over to games miners start out in the zone defense they knock it away from Bobrin. He gets it back, was open for a moment. Went inside to Houston instead. Tip back, no good. Antonio Davis with the board. Here comes Prince Stewart to Foster. Early offense not there for the Miners, who last night just did get by the Air Force Academy. 57 to 54, hit their free throws down the stretch to hang on against the Falcons. Shot selection is really crucial for them, Carl. First half against New Mexico, superb. Second half. They let the Lobos get back in the game with the help of a technical foul on the crowd. Houston working against Foster, and Foster wins that battle. Greg Foster has exceptional offensive skills. Seven foot. He can flat shoot it. Scored 29 points in the first two ball games, averaging six rebounds in the tournament as well. One of the things that has hurt Hawaii this year is recognition of the defense. That's how Utah beat them in the islands the first time they played. That guy's got to get it done, and... Gaines from the corner nails it a three-point shot. Well, you know, we just didn't see that yesterday. He's so tough. 6'3", is senior. He sat out the second half of last year. Had some great problems. Nice move by Stewart. Gets underneath the basket. And the foul called down low. Ivan Tate, one of three officials making the call right here. Our other officials tonight, David Hall and Gordon Burke. Give up the baseline here. And there's McCall as he really goes hard to the hole. Uses the basket to protect himself from small. Gets fouled, and he could get his ball club the lead. So here comes Mark McCall, one of two El Paso natives on this UTEP ball club. A great leaper, and came off the bench in the first game against the New Mexico Lobos. Scored 13, had 11 rebounds. Well, he gets the second one. He's got tremendous physical ability. A 31-inch vertical leap from a standing start. Try that out there, folks. That's not easy. He was a center in high school. Making the adjustment to the backcourt quite nicely for Norm Ellenberger and Don Haskins, who, by the way, is in the building watching this game. Obrin works the baseline, has it blocked, gets it back, and finally is fouled. Boy, is he a plugger. I like this guy. Very coachable. Miami Dade's leading scorer and rebounder. Hawaii won the basketball game against Wyoming with things like this, just staying in there, pounding the glass, and showing intensity. Great rebounding ball club, the Bows from Hawaii. And this guy's a big reason why. He was a small forward coming out of the junior college ranks in Miami. Was the leading scorer, leading rebounder for his ball club. Came over to Hawaii, sat most of the year behind Reggie Cross last year, put on some pounds, and is playing the pivot now. I'll tell you something he does that nobody talks about. Watch him run the court. He can move. And he can score. Scored nine last night against Utah. Had five rebounds as well. Missed the last game against UTEP down here in El Paso. McCall working against Smalls, one of the best defenders in the entire conference. Foster looking inside, but Bobrin doing a nice job of pushing Antonio Davis out. So Stewart tries the middle. Goes to Davis. The call off the mark with a shot, but Davis puts it back. Can he sky out of Oakland? I love this guy's game. So Antonio Davis gives his team back the lead at five to four. Watch how the zone moves now to get it inside easy. That's a great time. What an effort there. That's the problem with a zone when you're not a zone coach. Haskins and Ellenberger aren't zone coaches. 
They love the man-to-man, -man, but they've come out here with zones, and then Smalls makes them pay right there with a nice offensive move inside. And the viewer says, why do they come out with a zone if they don't like it? Simple. They don't want to get in foul trouble. Officials blow everything early. You don't want this guy with a basketball sitting down with three. Foster takes it right to him, but Smalls with the board. Up to Bo. Bo ran the transition game so well last night against Utah after he got a uh, little talking to by Riley Wallace. Yeah, that drill sergeant will do that every now and then. Took him out of the ball game in the first half, told him what he wanted done, and Bo went out there and did it. I like the level of play, like the intensity. Numbers are right. Stewart, the hall. Doesn't matter how you run, Carl, if you don't finish. That's the way you finish. Perfect. Freshman out of Landover, Maryland, does a nice job of finishing it off that time. And right now, it's a 7-6 ball game. UTEP on top. They're the visitors, technically, in this game because they're the lower-seeded team. Number four coming in. Gaines. And Gaines is two for two. That's not bad. He started to play some defense last year, too. He's an outstanding one-on-one -on -one operator. What you saw yesterday wasn't... Uh, what, uh, that just isn't the guy that you're used to playing for the Bows. Had a season-low five points last night against Utah, but when I thought about it, did a good job of rebounding, so his whole game didn't suffer. And I'll tell you what, Mark McCall's game, not suffering here early on. He's got three points. I think he's the best driver on their team. Got the great first step. One-point ball game here in the first half. Troy Bowl for three. And Foster with the rebound. Foster starts them out on the break. Stewart try to finish it off. Too strong off the glass. And here comes Houston. Will Gaines hold it up? Nope. Goes to Houston. Tries to go glass. Goes back up. No foul call. And here come the Miners. Now Stewart's going to slow it down and hold things up just a little bit. Here's Henry Hall fouled out front by Chris Gaines. Hall beats him to the turn. There's Riley Wallace. He had a great ball club at Seminole Junior College. He had a Division I team. Patio, Anthony Bowie. Well, a timeout on the floor here in El Paso. 15-16 left to play. The hometown team on top by one. If you don't want to slow down on your way to the top, Because you know to make a beer as refreshing as a mountain stream, you've got to start with a mountain stream. It's the right beer now. When a night on the town might last all night, call for the taste preferred at Better Night Spot. The silver bullet, the one that won't slow you down. It's the right beer now. Now here's a special announcement from Dennis Neeson. We've moved all of our El Paso dealerships into one central location on North Mesa. It's the all-new Rudolph Auto Mall. Now you can shop and compare Mitsubishi, Geos, Hyundai, Volkswagen, Audis, Chevrolets, and Rudolph used cars and trucks, all at one convenient location. So for your next car or truck, come to the mall. The all-new Rudolph Auto Mall on North Mesa, next to the UTEP campus. Everyone knows men and women are different. That's why Sierra Medical Center has special services just for women, because women still have women's needs. Zero mammography to help detect breast cancer earlier than ever before. Diagnosis and treatment of osteoporosis, obstetrics, gynecology, even special care if you're pregnant and have diabetes. Women's services at Sierra, because everyone knows men and women are different. Last night, the Miners held Air Force to 37% shooting from the floor. Raymond Dudley could only score 14 on 33% shooting. And I'll tell you what, the Miners overall through the first two games against the Lobos and the Falcons, 36%. That's pretty good defense. Yeah, that really is. It's a little uh, interesting, though, because Avai has picked up several uh, putbacks that just didn't go down. Gaines has been the offense. That guy isn't bad. McCall has been the offense. A three-point bomb by McCall now has six. And the lead is out to four for UTEP. Marlon Maxey is in the basketball game for Foster. They continue to stay with the 2-3 to stay out of early foul trouble. I like this strategy. Reset the shot clock on the kick ball, and Marlon Maxey back in there has that hand still bandaged, but it's around the hand, not the finger that was supposedly hurt. So I wonder if that's just a little bit of a uh, security blanket. You know, 
you shake hands with him, Carl. Get ready for a major league job. His hands are so huge. Transfer from the University of Minnesota. Once again, we've said this a couple times tonight, but Allenberger's strategy is tremendous. Officials are wired up just like players at the start of the game, so you call a lot of fouls. That's why he starts in a 2-3. Great passing inside a wood of block. That's outstanding. Jump ball. Oh, my. That is not a basket. That's a jump ball, and the arrow is pointing UTEP's way. He's been terrific in the early going. He's had a stick back. Look at this block. Now, that's the other end there. That's the end of the play. You yeah. don't see the block, but I'll tell you what. They are buzzing here in El Paso. That was a major league, big-time NBA putback. Antonio Davis scored 10 last night. Looking for more right now. Rims out. And here comes Troy Bow. Guy's pretty good in the open court, and he loses it. Get it back. Smalls gets it back to Bow, who gets it to Houston, who's fouled. Count it. And in any question, the crowd doesn't like it, but it's a block all the way. Gordon Burke with the correct call. Gordon Burke, Ivan Tate, Dave Hall, our officials. So Terry Houston is in the books with his first bucket of the ball game. They do such a nice job of moving the ball around. Yeah, they really do. Their transition game was very impressive last night. We got a 12-10 ball game as you look at Riley Wallace. He wears the Hawaiian shirt over in the islands. Here he dresses up. So Terry Houston off to finish the three-point play, which he does. He's got three points. Houston said one of his biggest adjustments to coming to Hawaii was playing for Riley Wallace. He said he never heard a guy scream and yell as much as Riley does, but he got the most out of me. <laughs> All right, the Bows have gone to their 2-3. Nice. Oh, he never saw him coming. Troy Bow took it away from the big man and takes it all the way. That is one strong guy. Now, Norm Ellenberger wanted a charge. You can't call a charge there. Dave Hall lays off the whistle correctly. And the Bows have their first lead of the ball game. One-point lead, 13 and a half minutes left to play here in the first half in El Paso. See how they fight the 2-3 now. Going inside to Maxi, who is yet to be heard from so far tonight. Bo almost had it, but slipped. Henry Hall, great three-point shooter, drives instead and is fouled out front before the shot. Hall's going to be a good player. I think the people in El Paso will really come to appreciate him. Transfer from Georgetown. Exceptionally strong. Watch him split the seam right here. And there's the bump by Gaines. And they'll inbound the basketball. Means Chris Gaines has to take a seat on the bench. That's his second foul. The third team foul on Hawaii here in the first half. Into the ball game is Phil Lott, a sophomore from Waterbury, Connecticut, who we'll talk about a little bit later on. An interesting kid. Out of bounds, 38 seconds on the shot clock. But Chris Gaines had been the major offensive producer for Hawaii here in the early going. He's on the bench with those five points. McCall up again. Look at that. Power move by Antonio Davis doesn't pay off, but he is going to the line. You see why the NBA is interested in this guy? Very few people as quick as him. One of those unrecruited gems, as I like to call him. We look at Riley Wallace down here at UTEP. You get more guys that nobody ever heard of that can play. Remember Tim Hardaway? Oh, could this be the next guy in the NBA? Big got, guys like this are valuable. Got one of those lively bodies that NBA scouts look for. 6'10", great shot blocker. Pretty good scorer. And he'll cover a little bit. And by the way, last night, picked up six rebounds, moved into the number five spot on the all-time rebounding charts here at the University of Texas, El Paso. Antonio Davis for the second free throw. Too strong. Maxie had a hand on it, saved by Houston. Over to Bobrin. So we're tied up at 13 apiece with 12.45 left to go here in the first half. Carl Arkey along with Irv Brown on TSI Sports. And those looking in. We're used to Don Haskins' teams playing man. They haven't played man yet. Nice feed back to Vincent Smalls as he was going hard to the basket and gets fouled. So Smalls will be shooting free throws. Brought the cutter down the middle. Look at it again. Here he comes down the middle. UTEP does a very good job of protecting the basket. They've got a case that looked like a solid block. Foster will return. 
Yeah, decision here for Norm Ellenberger. He's got to bring Antonio Davis out. That's his second foul as Smalls hits the free throw. So Foster will come in. Van Dyke will come in as well. We'll see who he takes over for. Henry Hall will come out, take a seat on the bench as Smalls gets set to shoot the second free throw. Smalls from the Philadelphia area. Riley Wallace had to think long and hard about signing him when he was recruiting him a couple of years ago. He's a 6'4 forward who frankly doesn't score an awful lot, but when he saw his defense, there was no question about it. I'd take five guys like that. Watch him practice one time, and, and that'll tell you why. He practices the same way he plays hard. In fact, nobody wants to play against him. He just beats on you. Maxi off the mark. Foster with a good position inside. This guy, if he just realizes how good he could be, a seven-footer who can shoot it and can run, are you kidding me? Here's a six-eighter who can shoot it. Maxi getting it back and fouled, going up. UTEP all over the glass on this end. Riley isn't very happy with his ball club. He wants him to box out. You know, it's an interesting, excuse me, Carl. It's an interesting uh, controversy. Do you block out? John Wooden said leap for the basketball. I find it's very hard to teach leapers to block out. They just want to go get the basketball. Sometimes that's not a bad way to do it. And the kids on both these teams love to go after the basketball. Excellent offensive rebounding teams. Now, Maxi, a 70% shooter, misses the first one. Perhaps the finger's still bothering him. Oh, I'm sure it is. Look at the size of those meat hooks, will you? You can hardly see the basketball. That's, that's not a baseball, folks. That's a basketball. And as Frank Broyles used to say, he's only a sophomore. 15-14. Bo's on top, playing very well on the road. The 19th day of this road trip. Obrin gets fouled going back up. That's a problem that Foster has. He gets into foul trouble because he tries to block every shot. You've got to be conscious of that when you're Norm Ellenberger. So first on Foster, the fourth on the Miners here in the first half. Hawaii has five team fouls. Head and shoulders, and that's the way to play UTEP. Don't go up with the first shot. One fake and then up. So here's Bobrin up at the line. Born in the Bahamas. Played his junior college basketball in the Miami area. Has the first one rim off. He's hit one free throw and is now one out of three at the line. Boy, something you think is automatic. It's such a problem. Free throws. Focuses in, concentrates, hits the second free throw. Now has two points in the ball game, and we've got a timeout on the floor. 11:54 left to play here in the first half, and the visitors from the island on top by two. Call now and you can have 13 weeks of the Wall Street Journal and this valuable 120-page Guide to Understanding Money and Markets. That's 13 weeks of the journal for the news and ideas you need every business day. And this guide free, which tells you everything you want to know about money and markets. Now for only $34. Call toll-free 800-632-4500. Today's Wall Street Journal. Faster, tougher, smarter. Call 800-632-4500 now. New car prices are being blown away at Fortune Lincoln Mercury. Buy a new 1990 Mercury Topaz at the lowest price of the year. Look what's included for $97.95. That's affordable four-door family comfort. Cougars ride like the wind and you'll save hundreds on a new Mercury Cougar at Fortune Lincoln Mercury. Only $14,695. At Fortune Lincoln Mercury, you get discount prices, selection, and award-winning service. Fortune Lincoln Mercury by Seno in Montana, El Paso. I just enrolled in 55 Plus, an outstanding senior program. I get discounts on my prescription eyewear. I was so impressed. I signed up, Mom. I like getting a private room at a semi-private rate so much, I enrolled Mother. 55 Plus gives me homemaker service and helps with insurance paperwork, too. It's all here in this brochure. I'm so excited. I told all my friends. 55 Plus and Registat. Free services of Providence Memorial Hospital. Coming up at halftime here on TSI Sports, the ever-popular question of the week. This week, the question is, which was the best WAC team ever in the history, all time, which was the best? Well, I'll tell you what, you're trying to get a guy in trouble because there have been some pretty <laughs> good. I wonder if they considered the Arizona schools. 
Now that's some pretty good basketball you teams. That you, you should. Take a By the look. way, Arizona yeah. State sure played a great game earlier today. UTEP missed their last five field goal attempts. Of course, last night they went uh, into the deep freeze for about six minutes towards the end of that ball game against Air Force. So they've had their dry spells. Here come the Miners trapped in the corner. They get it out to Van Dyke, who's in the ball game along with Stewart, Maxey, Hall, and Foster. Just did get it across the half-court line. Boy, they up the pressure. Bows want to take a little heat off. Going inside. Stewart can't get it to fall. Smalls is bumped, but hangs on. When you press, you get the wrong guy to take a shot. You get them out of their rhythm. It's not bad strategy. Also gets you going offensively if you can cre create some turnovers. Get some easy transition baskets. Here comes Phil Watt in the corner out of Waterbury, Connecticut, where he grew up on the mean streets. He was playing a pickup game there last summer. Guy pulled a gun on him over a disputed foul call. You're kidding. Tough place. <laughs> yeah, I would say so. Over disputed foul call. Great player. He was recruited by Syracuse, St. John's, a lot of other schools decided to come to Hawaii. Battle underneath. Smalls has got it. Wants to go up. And a traveling call. They turn it over. Boy, I like the backboards on both sides, Carl. They've had a tough time getting it down because there's so much com competition underneath there. you got to appreciate people hustling. Let's take a look at the turnovers. Well, the Bows can bang on the boards with the best of them. In fact, had 26 offensive boards the other night in their first round victory against Wyoming and only 16 defensive boards. They love to go to the glass at the offensive end. Still a two-point lead for Hawaii. This guy can shoot it outside. He hadn't put one up yet, but I thought he really saved him last night with the outside shooting. Nice, unselfish play by Prince Stewart as he goes to the big guy, and Foster has four. Riley Wallace really isn't his own coach either. He prefers man. There's no responsibility in zone, particularly rebounding. Who blocks who out? That was very, very easy. Stewart with the drive, the dish, and Foster is up around the rim. Easy. Good shooter, Phil Lott. Too strong that time. Look at the offensive board by Smalls, who has it stripped away. Then he comes back and fouls out of frustration. When Smalls put it on the ground, as you look at his coach, that lets the little guy be equal with him. Second personal on Smalls and Riley Wallace has to make a decision right here. How long to go with Smalls, his best defender? Ten minutes to play here in the first half. A low-scoring first half, 16-14. I saw Al McGuire get in foul trouble with Earl Tatum in a ball game. I have to be doing. He got three right away. He couldn't take him out. He got four. A big part. He put him at the top in a 1-3-1 because guys don't foul in a 1-3-1 at the top. The roulette rim that time on the shot by Maxey comes out. And the Bows looking to go up by four. Houston loses it on the dribble, and then he comes back and fouls. No question about it, too. Terry Houston said that he grabbed my arm, but that isn't what happened. Houston lost it, put it on the ground. That's the second play in a row for Stewart. And we're over the limit right now as Houston has picked up his second foul. Watch it again. Put it on the floor, and lets the little guy take over. He might have kicked it. That's what they're hollering about. Hollering won't change anything for Riley Wallace right now. They're over the limit, and it's free throw time for the UTEP Miners as Prince Stewart will take his trip to the line. Stewart scoreless so far, a 69% shooter on the season. You know what's amazing, Carl? You do some pro basketball. The Bows have been on the road much more than any pro basketball team this year. Oh, it much, isn't even much close. More. No. Pro basketball team, if they go out for 10 days, that's a lot. The Bows have been out, what, a month? I'll tell you what, you take a pro team out for a month, they're calling their uh, union representative. Exactly. And as I understand it, if Hawaii wins this game tonight, they're not going back unless they're at Long in Long Beach. That means they're out another week. They'll go to Los Angeles tomorrow if they win tonight and find out their fate to see where they will go to play in the NCAA. It's all tied up, or exactly, no, it's 18-16. Now the Miners back up on top, excuse me. Open in the corner, Lott turns it down. Smalls around Foster, meets Van Dyke. Good help on the defense. Lott is short on the shot, and Hall comes down with the rebound to Stewart. One of the things that's really hurting the Bows right now, Gaines got two fouls quickly after hitting a couple from the outside. He's sitting down. They need his outside shooting. Three of the Bows starting players with two fouls apiece, Smalls, Gaines, and Houston. 
And a nice feel by Bo. Small guy, but he got up there. And he's fouled as he goes down the middle. This guy is so tough. He wasn't really recruited that hard by the Bows. He led Bridgehampton, New York, to three straight state champions. He really factors out there. Ben Smalls will come out, as will Terry Houston, both of those players with two fouls apiece. Meanwhile, another bow with two fouls, Chris Gaines checks back in. So Gaines works with Lott, Bo, Andrew McGuire, who just came in, and Bobrin. Two 6'9 players on the front line now for Hawaii. You know, I'd like to have walked me to my car in a bad area. <laughs> Maxie and Smalls. You think anybody'd mess with those guys? I wouldn't. The hands on Maxie, the shoulders on Smalls. This kid ain't bad either. For three, Troy Bo. I just think he's a big time player. He's so strong. He reminds me a lot of Hardaway in the open court. He weaves through traffic. Stocky kid with big legs can really get it done. Five points now for Troy Bowen. He gives his team back the lead, 19-18. McGuire's in. He's wrapped heavily with those two knees. Most people wouldn't play nice. And he had a tough time moving right there. I don't know Good. if he knew what to do at that point, but he also couldn't make the move. They drained both knees again. That was a nice effort by Hall. Shot is short. Maxi mistimes his leap. Knocked out of bounds. But the Miner's going to get it back. We've got a timeout on the floor here in the Special Event Center. 7.45 left to play in the opening act. And the Bows on top by one. Cruising downtown in my limousine. Big skyscrapers and the nightlife scene. The rush out traffic, we get around here. Hot fashion ladies and cold tourist beer. If you like your beer fresh, pure, and natural, head for the Rockies and the original taste of Coors. And tap an ice cold Coors with a friend of yours. Coors, the Rocky Mountain legend. Chevy's ads say they're winning in Ford County, Illinois. Good idea. Fact is, Ford sold more trucks than Chevy in Ford County, Illinois, Ford County, Kansas, Chad's Ford, Pennsylvania, and Chevy Chase, Maryland. In fact, Ford outsold Chevy all over America in 1989. And Chevy keeps saying they're winning. Winning what? Get $750 cash bonus on all F-Series at Kemp, Casa, or Chevalier Ford. It's the strangest thing. All of a sudden, there was a gut-wrenching pain. Now I think I know what it's like to have a baby. It was a kidney stone. The doctor said it had to come out immediately. I was out for six weeks after my surgery. Well, Doc sent me to Sun Towers. They took care of it in no time with this laser gizmo. No surgery required, and all on an outpatient basis. Gee, Bert, when did all this happen? <laughs> Yesterday. Laser Tripsy at Sun Towers Hospital. Your one source. Carl Arkey along with Irv Brown here in El Paso, Texas at the WAC Championship. Just about exactly what we expected. A one-point ball game with 7.45 left to play here in the first half. Well, you can see the new 1990 legacy at your local Subaru dealer. Subaru, we've built our reputation by building a better car. So one-point ball game, which is what we expected. That's the way it went the last time these two teams hooked up here in the Special Event Center back on March 2nd. The Miners coming out with Van Dyke, Stewart, Hall, Maxi, and Foster. Interesting matchup. Van Dyke has picked up Gaines. Let's see if they move David inside. He's got about six inches. McGuire watching Maxi in, inside down low as Stewart brings it around. Looking for Foster. He's got position. He had good position on Bobrin, who fouled him from behind. Did a nice job pinning him down. Guy worked very hard in Los Angeles this summer to get, just get himself ready. All right, here's the pin down. Good entry pass. Most people have a tough time feeding the post. Not that time. Bobrin picks up his second, so now the four of the five starters for Hawaii have two fouls apiece. Bo is the only one who's not picked up a foul. And Foster, an excellent free throw shooter. He was six out of six at the line down the stretch last night in the final 25 seconds against Air Force. Carl, consider this, because you used to do the jazz games. 
Mark Eaton was a project when they picked him up. Kevin Duckworth was a project. This guy is not a project. This guy is a player right now. All he needs is a mean streak, hit the boards. Guy, in my opinion, is an NBA player. Seven-footer that can shoot and run. Are you kidding me? You think he still needs a mean streak? Uh, definitely. Yeah, because they're going to hit you in the NBA. He's a pretty tough kid already. Well, needs to get tougher, though. You're right. And Bo for three. Bullseye. Good player. I'll say two three-point shots here in the first half for Troy Bowe, and we're tied up at 22. Once again, at stake, the automatic qualifying berth in the NCAA tournament, and that's all you really guarantee to get. You don't know what's going to happen. Miners have made the NCAA tournament for the last six years in a row. Here's Maxi, too strong. Maxi follows it up and bangs right into McGuire. Maxi picks up the foul. They don't like it here in the Special Event Center. Andrew McGuire is the ace in the hole for the Bows. He did a great job. He played either four or five, sacrificed the body. I don't think anyone else would play with those knees. I mean, he looks like the mummy. Well, you know how much he wants to play. Maxi wants to play, but I'll tell you what, McGuire, who just came into the shot, he wanted to leave Central Michigan University, so he wrote a letter to Riley Wallace. It was unanswered, so he called him up, followed it up. Riley says, I don't have a scholarship. So McGuire says, no problem. I'll pay my own way and show you that I should have a scholarship, and that's exactly what he did. Here's Gaines. Off the mark, and Stewart high for the rebound. Stewart over to Foster. Oh, that's nice. Oh, that's nice. That's beautiful. I'll second that motion. That was great body control by Greg Foster. Oh, he's like a guard sometimes out there. We saw that last night when he brought the ball up court. Well, consider this. A guy like Danny Shays, Blair Rasmus. I'm talking about big, bulky guys. Here you got one that can move or can shoot as good as those guys. That guy can shoot. McGuire has good range, but that time it went awry. Here's Stewart. 24-22. Miners on top in a seesaw nip and tuck battle here in El Paso. Into the half-court offense now. Hall with a quick shot. Let's it go. Bingo! Tremendously strong in the wrists and forearms. All he needs to do is improve defensively and have good shot selection. Out to a five-point lead now on that three-point bomb by Hall, who's got seven points. Nice entry pass, and over the back before the shot, the foul called. Foster's going to pick it up, and he reaches. And bad things happen when yeah, you reach. It really does. All officials are, are really predictable. Look here, will you call this? Well, sure, because he reaches. Every official in America calls it. Let him catch the basketball in that position. You've got him pushed out. You're bigger than he is, so you block the shot. Those are things Greg must learn. Got to move those feet, move around. See, I believe if he would have come with Haskins as a freshman, this guy would be a, a guy who's a definite first-round pick if you look at what Boburn has done for the line. But because he goofed around, he went to another school, then he had to sit out a year. He missed all those fundamentals. Front end of the one-and-one. And Bobrin nails it. Cliff now with three points. As we said, he missed the last meeting against the Utah Miners here in El Paso. Had that twisted ankle that he had suffered just a couple of nights before against the Lobos. And he misses the back end. So Bobrin now three out of six from the line. Got to hit those free throws, especially in a crucial game like this. Trust me, if it's close, that's what will be the deciding factor. Always is. Strong move by Maxi. Pretty quick around the hole, isn't he? Not bad. Came in averaging 12 points per game, the leading scorer on the season for these UTEP Miners, who lead by 6, 29-23. Bobrin tries to answer. McGuire with a tap, no good. And this is Maxi playing point guard. Wisely hands it off to the real point guard for the UTEP Miners, who are on top by six. Boy, you get one here. This could be a will breaker this early in the game. Boy, he needs to stop. Good defense by McGuire to deny the inside pass. He couldn't stop Stewart. Stewart gets it back. Maxi. And Maxi's foul going up, runs right into Ivan Tate, who says this isn't dangerous work. Effort. Did you see the effort? Three stick back opportunities. Might work out better than getting the ball down because they get another guy in foul trouble. Here's Maxie. Gets hit on the arm by the... 
And he's going to line after the foul by McGuire. The word that comes to mind is relentless. <laughs> These guys do not give up. Here comes Terry Houston taking off the warm-up. He'll come in for Cliff Bobrin. Bobrin with two fouls. Same situation for Houston. Gaines and Smalls. Smalls now back in there for Phil Lott. Smalls with four points already. Houston with only three, and that's a big factor here in the first half. Last night, Houston scored 21 points against Utah, had seven rebounds and four assists as well. Maxi hits nothing but net. His hands hang down to his knees. He's got the longest fingers. You think that is an advantage? No pad on the hand now. He's taking it off. Doesn't need it anymore. Maxi with five. Foster with eight. Davis with three. McCall with six. And Hall with seven. That's the scoring. Prince Stewart with two as well for the UTEP Miners. Four minutes to go, and the Miners on top by eight. 31 to 23. Troy Bow off the mark with a three-point shot. The Gaines tracks it down. Bow got hit in the eye. Let's see if he's all right. Still squinting. This has been an 11-4 run since the 7.45 mark. So over the last three minutes and 45 seconds, UTEP has outscored Hawaii 11-4. Nice passing. Great feed back into the middle. What a pass by McGuire. That's the way to beat the zone, huh? Come from the baseline. I like that pattern. Well done. Unselfish play by these bows. They give it up to each other. Let's pick this up again. Watch the dump off pass. Smalls takes it strong. You're never going to get a free one with UTEP because Haskins played for Henry Iba. And Iba's philosophy was a simple one. If you come down the middle, we'll let you do it. But we're going to put you in the nickel seats, get a foul. And the Miners can afford to do it because they've got that great depth. They can bring a Maxi off the bench, a Van Dyke off the bench, and Francis Izenwa, number 42, who just came in wearing the goggles, the Nigerian nightmare. <laughs> you know, the crowd really loves him. If you watch him practice, you see why. He's got the best work ethic. Just learning. He's just a pup. New Mexico Military Institute. Doesn't shoot a lot. Can cover a little bit. Will hit the glass. Number 42 at the left-hand bottom of your screen, Francis Izenwa. He goes up for the rebound, but it's Van Dyke, the sophomore from Mesa, who gets it. So Smalls, one out of two at the line, and the free throw shooting proving to be a problem here for the Bows in the first half. Now, the last time these two teams met here in El Paso, UTEP led for about 38 minutes of the 40 minutes in the ballgame. Hawaii had to come from behind and never did have the lead till the mi final minute 45. Good screen by Maxi as Stewart gets free for a moment. Nice feed inside to Van Dyke. Here comes Bo right back at him. He'll try and penetrate. There he goes. Meets three miners who cut him off at the pass. Van Dyke commits the foul. Boy, Van Dyke had the great jam at the other end, but they were a little slow getting back, and Bo is terrific in the open court. There's Norm Ellenberger. He's very upset with his guys. You get an easy one, and then you let Bo do his thing. And his bow reminds you more and more of Hardaway. He isn't as good. There aren't many who are. But the same kind of player. Go in a broken court. And anybody better in this league this year than this guy. Over the limit. So Bo is shooting the free throws. Bo, 76% from the line. He's the leading scorer right now in the ballgame for Hawaii. And he really benefited from the misfortune of Chris Gaines last year when Gaines was academically ineligible. He got a chance to play, and he's become a great player for Riley Wallace. He's got 10 here in the first half, and a timeout on the floor. Less than three minutes to go here in the opening act, and it's a seven-point lead for the UTEP Miners. I like cruising downtown in my limousine. Big skyscrapers and the nightlife scene. And rush out traffic, we get around here. If you like your beer fresh, pure, and natural, head for the Rockies and the original taste of Coors. And tap an ice cold Coors with a friend of yours. Coors, the Rocky Mountain legend. 
If you're going to hunt for investment bargains, if you want to make sound investment decisions in today's volatile market, the most powerful, reliable tool you can use is information. That's right, information. And now every month, Standard & Poor's Stock Guide will bring you information of a scope you've never seen before. This big, unique, 268-page stock guide provides you with essential facts and figures on more than 5,000 listed and unlisted stocks. You'll find out about their earnings, prices, dividends, company products, over 40 revealing characteristics. The guide also covers mutual funds, feature articles, and much much more. This is the famous stock guide many professional investors and brokers consider the information source. And over 375,000 smart investors turn to it every month. Now you can use it as a solid foundation for your investment strategy. Yes, you can receive six months of Standard & Poor's Stock Guide for only $43, a real saving over the regular subscription price. Simply call this toll-free number, 800-228-6600. That's 800-228-6600. Send no money now. We'll bill you later. In case you're wondering, the key number here beside the score you just see, offensive rebounding, UTEP with eight on the offensive glass, the Bows only two. I really believe watching uh, uh, 17 minutes plus of the first half, Hawaii's got one shot. They have to use the broken court with Bow. I just think UTEP is too strong from the backboards. You got to change it up. The only thing I see that could really totally change it up is number 11. I'd let him go every time. He changed the complexion of the ball game last night against Utah. Got his team out and running. Of course, you got to get the ball off the glass. There's the man you're talking about. Great steal by Bo. Takes it all the way himself. Doesn't score, but gets to the line. Is he something, though? Don't let anybody set up. Let him go. I don't care if it's one on two, two on three. Look what this guy creates. He's so strong. He reminds you of a strong running back, a Joe Morris type. That was just excellent. That is a good comparison. He is a Joe Morris type, and Norm Ellenberger says he's a thorn in my side right now. Ten points already, make it 11. And Norm knows what this guy can do. Do you see anybody out there from UTEP who's laid a glove on him, slowed him down on the broken court? Look at those arms. Look at those shoulders. And he does it with defense. A lot of his baskets come off of good steals. He's got 12 points. Keep in mind, his career high is 18. Had that last year down here at UTEP. The other side of the uh, coin, you got to beat them on the glass, just pound them to death. Ellenberger's team is a far superior offensive rebounding team tonight. Don't say that happens all the time, but thus far, so you got to use it. There they are again. Van Dyke over the back, picks up another foul. That's wow. an easy call. The crowd doesn't like it, but that was obvious. Not at all. Van Dyke was on the back half, and every official in America underneath the basket calls that. The Bows fought right back into this thing. The down five. We're down by nine just moments ago, and it looked like the Miners were going to put this one away. But Norm Ellenberger says, hey, I know this game. It's way too early to be saying that. Here's a great free throw shooter. Led the conference his first two years in the WAC. Then, of course, last year didn't play. Was academically ineligible. This year finished third in the free throw shooting contest. Oh, he's got a sweet stroke, Carl. Plus, left-handers, you ever seen a bad-looking left-handed bowler? Any, anybody left-handed just looks good. Those left-handed pitchers, they win you games and money. Oh, see, we As soon as you guy. do it. Ah, it's your fault. I was a good left-handed pitcher, by the way. All right. <laughs> I know what you're talking about. Gaines with six points, and it's down to four. The Miners have not scored in a little while here. They're working with McCall, Stewart, Van Dyke, Izenwa, and Maxi, so a lot of their frontline guys getting some rest right now. All Norm is doing here is just trying to slow Bo down, frustrate him a little bit. Bo has taken over and gotten Hawaii back into the game. So you slow him down. Knows how to play those passing lanes. Troy Bo out front. Stewart looked like he was going to take the shot. Gave it to a Zenwa. The follow no good by McCall. Here comes Bo. Broken court. Doesn't matter the numbers. Just do it. There he is. Dumps it off to Gaines who gets it blocked by Van Dyke. Stewart comes up with it. Stewart does it by himself. Hey, what a great move. We've been talking about Bo. How about Prince Stewart out of Kentucky? Oh. Back at you, he says, Troy Bo. Took it right back at him, and the crowd is fired up here in El Paso. What a move. Just like when it looked like they were going to cut that lead down to two, Miners go back up by six. Open in the left side, Bo. Too strong, and Maxi with the board. Almost loses it. 
They want to slow it down a little bit now. Ellenberger's up talking to him. Troy Bowe right on top of Prince Stewart. Now he releases a little bit, drops back. Under 30 seconds to play here in the first half, so the Miners will play for the final shot. Prince Stewart taking his sweet time about it. Finally gets his team into motion right now. Under 10 seconds to go here in the half. Shot clocks are off. Here's Stewart working against Bo. Gets him off of him. Puts up the jumper. Maxie can't get it off before the end of the first half. The shot is no good, but an excellent first half for the UTEP Miners who head to the dressing room on top of the Bows by six. In this, the championship game of the Western Athletic Conference postseason tournament here in El Paso, where we will return in just a moment to recap the first half. It's time again for the Western Athletic Conference Question of the Week. Call 1-900-454-0556 to select your favorite player, coach, or team from the Western Athletic Conference. That's 1-900-454-0556. Now, here's this week's question. Which team would you call the best WAC team of all time? Would it be the 78 Lobos, coached by Storm and Norman Ellenberger and featuring Michael Cooper? New Mexico won the conference, posting a 24-4 season record. How about the Utah Utes in 81? With the help of Tom Chambers, Danny Brain, and Pace Mannion, they won the conference title and made their 11th NCAA appearance, losing a third-round close one at home to the North Carolina Tar Heels. Fred Reynolds, Luster Goodwin, and Juden Smith earned the 84 Miners a conference crowd and a trip to the NCAA. The 87 Wyoming Cowboys, ranked as high as number five in the nation, were captained by Fennis Dembo and Eric Lechner. Jim Brandenburg's Pokes won the WAC tournament, did the NCAA dance past Virginia and UCLA, and waltzed into the Sweet 16, only to lose to UNLV. The 1988 scoring 1-2 punch dealt by Michael Smith and Jeff Chapman vaulted BYU to a whack title and on to an NCAA at-large bid. You make the call. What was the all-time best whack team? Call 1-900-454-0556. The selection with the most votes will be announced during the rest of this tournament. Play the whack question of the week. Call 1-900-454-0556 and call now. Every week, Barron's arrives to an unusual reception. Readers plow into it in search of undiscovered values, emerging stocks, and market insights. A fresh issue of Barron's doesn't stay fresh long. And that's the beauty of it. Subscribe now to Barron's and get 13 weeks for only $28 with a money-back guarantee. Call toll-free 800-445-4500. That's 800-445-4500. Back to halftime here in El Paso, Texas, the WAC Championship here in 1990 at the Special Event Center and the hometown team on top by six. It's UTEP 35, the Hawaii Rainbows 29. Carl Arkey along with Irv Brown back here at halftime in El Paso. And it was a close ball game. UTEP on top by a score of 20 to 19 at the 745 mark. And then the UTEP Miners went on an 11 to 4 run. Yeah, they really did a great job on the offensive glass. And they really balanced it off, you know. They did so many good things with their big people. And Prince Stewart took over. They got themselves a nice little lead. But I know what Norm Ellenberger is thinking. You got to slow that bow down. This guy can take over a basketball game. We saw him do it yesterday. And Chris Gaines has not really taken off. He looked good in the early part of the first half. Hit his first two shots, had five points, but then picked up two fouls and had to go to the bench. Yeah, and he really looked good shooting the basketball before the game. His legs are feeling better. Looked like he was off to a big night. I don't think he got a shot off once he came back in. I believe you're right. In fact, right now, four of the five starters for Hawaii have at least two fouls on them. So foul situation is going to be critical here in the second half. Yeah, and, you know, uh, both coaches are very good bench coaches. You know, you have guys who go out and they do a good job in practice. Nothing happens during the game. Now, you watch both these guys. Something happens. They both will adjust. I look for Wallace to try and really pick it up a bunch, maybe press some, but above all, let Bo go in the in the in a broken court on the other side of the court ellenberger wants to pound the glass with that big front line He's got a lot of depth to use his three big guys off the bench and all have been effective troy bow has certainly got it done here tonight for the hawaii rainbow warriors he is the leading scorer in double figures with 
12 points unofficially. Greg Foster, on the other hand, leads the balance scoring attack for the UTEP Miners. He's doing a great job in this tournament, the big guy. Oh, no question about it. Carl, I really believe it will probably come down, forget everything we talked about, because we don't know what we're talking about anyway. <laughs> It'll probably come down to that simple little thing called a free throw. It seems like it always does, and both ball clubs a little shaky. Exactly. Hawaii has had numerous opportunities and has not taken advantage of them here in the first half. There's Greg Foster, who had eight points to lead that balanced scoring attack for the Miners. Yeah, Greg Foster, once again, that big seven-footer, can do some things. Here's the Bows with the penetration, and there's Troy Bow, and in that appropriate bow for the Bows just buries one. I thought he just gave them a life when they desperately needed it. Bows for the Bows buries one. I love it. Alliteration here Thank on the Western Athletic Conference Championship. Joe will return, or I should say Herb will return with Joe Kearney here at halftime in just a moment. It's the right beer now, but not now. It's the right beer now, but definitely not now. Coors Light, it's the right beer now. And absolutely, positively, not now. No way. Come on, uh, Jimmy, let me get your cap. Huh? This is a golfer. He'll play anywhere. Golf Digest magazine helps his game anywhere he plays with instructional articles from top pros. So wherever you play, play better with Golf Digest. Get a full year of Golf Digest for $16.77. Call 800-248-1200 now and get a free half-hour instructional video with your paid subscription. Call 800-248-1200 now. The Michelin family was born to roll with the MXL for imported cars, the XZX for small cars, the XA4 all-season radial, the XH Michelin's longest lasting tire, and the all-season XCH4. Michelin, we're the perfect road company for your family. Factory outlet tire, 306 South Santa Fe Street, serving the border over 35 years. Gold's Gym wants you. Just listen. Gold delivers everything that I'm looking for in a gym, and they care. For me, Gold's Gym is the only place to work out. Gold's Gym is the place for me. Turn good health into gold at Gold's Gym. What more do you need? Thanks, El Paso, for making Gold's Gym number one. Back in El Paso, and there's a story, UTEP by six over Hawaii, and our special guest, the commissioner of the West Athletic Conference, Joe Kearney. And Joe, we just saw the greatest halftime show maybe we've seen this year. These guys dance like you used to. Oh, yeah, I, yeah in my wildest imagination. <laughs> well, they put on quite a show. Everybody talking around the hotel today, talking here at the, at the arena, about how many spots we'll get in the Western Athletic Conference as far as the NCAA tournament. Can you get a feel for it, a read? Well, no, I really can't. Until we take a look at how many upsets we've had in all of our tournaments and how many uh, very low-ranked uh, teams, uh, when I should say low-ranked, people out of the top 50 uh, make it through to be the automatic qualifiers, that gives us a better look. But uh, I've said it all along, we've got four or five teams that play well enough to deserve uh, a berth in the tournament. Uh, certainly, we would expect to get around three, maybe four. Uh, that would be great. Yeah, wouldn't that be something else? You know, there's a lot of conversation also about the future of tournaments, uh, specifically the tournament in the West Athletic Conference. How far in advance are, uh, uh, you know, are, are, are we confirmed that we definitely will have a tournament? Well, we've definitely confirmed in 1991 we'll be at the uh, Auditorium Arena in Laramie, Wyoming uh, for the 1991 tournament. I think what the speculation revolves about, Irv, is that once they uh, voted in, in uh, to be in effect in 92 to cut the schedule back, from 25, I mean, from 28 to 25, and then also determined that certain kind of exception or games uh, might be eliminated. People started to determine oh, maybe we could make more money with a home team uh, uh, matchup with uh, an outside opponent than sharing for a tournament. So it depends what will happen in the 1991 convention. And if uh, we can get some relief there and get maybe back to 27, 28 games, 
I doubt that anybody would do anything with the tournament. I'm going to change up on you a little bit. We had the greatest discussion the other day about the hook shot. Now, you worked for Tippy Dye, maybe the best teacher of the hook shot going. There's a guy named Bob Huberg there. I believe your assignment was to simply throw him the basketball when you were the freshman coach. What, about a 1,000 times a day? Well, it seemed like that. No, it was really only about 500. We would uh, take different positions around the court, and Coach Dye asked me to feed the ball into him and don't always feed it perfect, feed it and always got to reach or go to his right or his left and uh, throw it high so he'd get the used to what kind of passes he might run into during a ball game, which are never totally letter perfect as, as well as you'd like to have them be. You know, I miss the shot. Quite frankly, I found it indefensible. We honored a guy yesterday, Noble Sh uh, Neville Shedd, who had a great hook shot. Why don't we see it anymore? Well, I think uh, the, the players are so uh, agile and so tall and can jump so high that uh, once that thing started to get wound up and go into action, I think a lot of them could time their leaps to catch it before it goes in the downward swoop. And also, I think they're so darn quick uh, that they could get a hold of that ball because a lot of them will take it right here first and then start their move. And uh, you see the short little jump hook. You see the short little hook shot still. But when we talked about Hoobrick, you're talking going out 20, 25 feet, and he'd turn and throw that hook shot and hit nothing but the bottom of the net. The young people have no idea what we're talking about, but we had a good time. Joe, thank you. We'll you see what it. happens because we got a good one going. We certainly do, Herb. Joe Kearney, the commissioner of the West Athletic Conference. The Miners lead the Bows by six. Back with more right after this. West to the mean streets, Clint Eastwood has enforced his own style of law. Now, you can own his greatest movies with the Clint Eastwood collection from Time Life Video. As a greedy cop or a gunslinging renegade, Clint delivers nonstop action and some of the most famous one-liners in screen history. Go ahead. Make my day. Start your collection with the outlaw Josie Wales for just $14.99 plus shipping and handling. Part philosopher. Diane ain't much of a living boy. Part sharpshooter. Josie goes out for revenge. You gotta get me. I mean plum mad dog me. Other videos include Hang 'em High. Plus Dirty Harry and Magnum Force. There's no commitment or minimum number to buy, and you keep only the videos you want. So call now for the outlaw Josie Wales. Here's how to order. To order your Clint Eastwood video cassette, call 1-800-366-8282 or send just $14.99 plus $3.23 shipping and handling to Clint Eastwood Collection, Grand Central Station, P.O. Box 5294, Department 215, New York, New York. They raised a family in this house, and now, after nearly 40 years... It was close with just our Social Security and Bill's retirement, but now we can't afford the electricity to keep the house warm. Peggy Ross and let El Paso Electric have a billion dollars. But they're already back for more, and now she's talking about a state income tax. Either Peggy Rawson doesn't know any better, or she just doesn't care. El Paso has a lot to lose without Tati Santi Esteban. The presidents of all the branches of M Bank El Paso share something in common besides banking. They're all longtime El Pasoans. Each has a personal stake in the future of our city. So they continue a tradition begun 108 years ago, putting El Paso money back to work for El Paso. These presidents appreciate the El Pasoans who have supported and continue to support El Paso's oldest bank. M Bank El Paso. Stability since 1881. Carl Arkey along with Irv Brown back here at the Special Event Center in El Paso. The 1990 Western Athletic Conference Championship ball game and the Bows and the Miners going at it. Six-point lead right now for the UTEP Miners who have held Hawaii to 26% shooting from the floor. And what would it be without Bo as we take a look? Bo has three of, uh, three of those seven field goals and you're just not going to beat too many people shooting 26%. Look at the rebounds. Carl, I find that uh, just vital. UTEP all over the glass and uh, you know they, they've just got the big advantage and it isn't broken down for you right there that you see the six uh, rebound difference between the two ball clubs but the big difference is on the offensive boards eight to two the last numbers that we saw in favor of the miners yeah. all kinds of balance for UTEP as you can see they don't have anybody in double figures for Hawaii it's been Troy Bowen he is the key in the second half the way they're shooting he has got to penetrate. He's got to do his thing in the open court. He had three rebounds to go along with those 12 points. Small scored five and had seven rebounds to lead the Bows in that category. Well, that's the setup going into the second half here in El Paso. When we come back, the second act of this play here in the Western Athletic Conference Championship. 
Tonight's Western Athletic Conference Championship game between the UTEP Miners and the Hawaii Rainbows is brought to you by Coors Light. There's no slowing down with a silver bullet, the best light beer for a good long time. Because you like some days to be all downhill. It's the right beer now. If this is your idea of preserving the wildlife. It's the right beer now. Because out here, not everything hibernates for the winter. So reach for the silver bullet, the one that won't slow you down. Cause life. Yeah, it's the right beer now. <laughs> Tennis Magazine covers everything you want to know about tennis, from instruction to equipment, pro tennis to resorts. If tennis makes you feel good, a subscription to Tennis Magazine will make you feel great. Subscribe to Tennis Magazine now, only $9.97 for 12 issues. Call 800-228-6600. We'll include two free booklets on improving your game. Tennis Magazine. Call 800-228-6600 now. My family and I have been lucky to grow up with clean air, water, and land, but the environment can't be left to the hands of luck. I'm Bob Kruger, and I'd like to go to work for you as Railroad Commissioner. The Railroad Commission regulates the energy industry and protects the environment, and we're going to do both for the sake of your family, for the sake of my family, too. Bob Kruger, Democrat for Railroad Commissioner. It's official. The Chevy truck is the number one selling truck in West Texas and Southern New Mexico. And right now, your Southwest Chevy dealer has some great reasons to buy. And Rudolph sells more Chevy trucks than all the other area Chevy dealers combined. Because we always have the biggest selection, great prices, and at Rudolph, it's our people who make the difference. Rudolph Chevrolet and the all-new Rudolph Auto Mall on North Mason. Chevy trucks are number one. Come drive one today at your Southwest Chevy Geo dealer. Bows and the Miners back out on the court, warming up for the second half. And looking back at the first two games, we're reminded that Hawaii trailed the Miners at halftime in each of those contests. Oh, yeah, there's no quit in this outfit. Would you quit with that guy in a green jacket? You can't go home if you do. Uh, him and Haston's a lot alike, aren't they? Riley Wallace, what a great job he's done. 44 and 46 in his three years now on the island, but in the last two years, 40 and 21, so you can just about disregard that 40 and 25 record they had two years ago, yeah. his first year on the scene. Hope they get that new arena over there. That will really help them to get an on-campus site. San Diego State is scheduled to get one. They'd be the only school in a whack without one. I just think it's important. I think you get the home court advantage, and they just need it. Well, you know pay. what? If you'd make the first donation, maybe they'd name it the I'm Irv Brown Memorial, well, not <laughs> Memorial, Irv Brown <laughs> Arena. Just like the Blaisdell, huh? I'll uh -huh. do that. Uh -huh. I like it over there. Huntsman Center in Salt Lake City. We'll have the Brown. Yeah. Brown Arena out on o Oahu. <laughs> so settle back in your seats wherever you are, whether it's on Oahu or here in Texas, up in Utah, out in California. We're set for action. The second half between the Miners and the Bows, the final 20 minutes of the Western Athletic Conference season yet to unfold here in El Paso. 2-3 zone. Been that way all night long. Why change when you're leading? Here's Bo, who had that great first half. Bobrin did not have a field goal. Gaines started out strong, dumps it off to Bobrin, who loses the handle. They're going to say it went off one of the miners, though. They got a break that time. I really thought that that's off to uh, Bo Kitt. 25 seconds on the shot clock. The first possession here of the second half. Inside pass, great entry to Bobrun, who gets the roll. Did a nice job. At times, Hawaii has done a great job with their entry passes, and then at other times, it's disappeared. Cliff Bobrun was 0 for 5 from the floor in that first half. That's his first field goal of the ball game, and it cuts that lead down to four. Crowd stands until the opponent scores a basket. Of course, they're down now after that hoop. One night, I believe UTEP was playing with Cheetah Baptist. They stood for most of the game. <laughs> <laughs> Cheetah Baptist? What, Cheetah Baptist? It's in Oklahoma. You've well, been down they were, there. Oh, that's Washita, isn't it? Well, I never pronounce anything right. I can't say Colorado <laughs> right now. I live there. <laughs> they stood the whole game almost. Whole half. 
I'm going to have to remember that one. Yeah, I like that. Those folks up in Arkansas love you. Here's Maxi. Rims out. Smalls with another rebound. He only had seven in the first half. See if he finds the open spot. There he goes. Right down the middle. Off the glass. Troy Bow with 14. Hot Rod Hunter would call that what? A leap and leaner. Leap and leaner. Good if it goes. And it was gone for Troy Bow. And the lead is down to two. 35 to 33. UTEP on top. But they've not scored here in the second half. Oh, now they've scored. And how? Yeah, four-point lead as they up at the 37-33. Monster jam by Maxi. The maximum jam. Maxi now with seven points in the ball game. Lead out to four again. Great pass inside to Houston, who gets stuffed and fouled. Looked like he was riding them all the way on a hip. Block was pretty good upstairs. Ivan Tate spots it. See what you think at home. Goes up, you can see he's all over him. The block is good, but he's nailing him going up. That's every bit of as much a foul as anything else. Third foul on Van Dyke, who heads for the bench. Antonio Davis checks in. Davis operating with two fouls, as is the man at the line, Terry Houston. Bows have got to get him going. He was only one out of five from the floor in that first half at three points. Now has four. It's an old cliche. What happens the first five minutes of the second half usually tells you What's happening right now? Good things are happening for this team. Bad things for the team in orange. You get this one, you got a 6-0 run going, and you're right back in this thing. It's a deuce. 37-35, just under 18 minutes left to play in this ball game. A long way to go, but the Bows have tightened it up. 2-3. Now, last night against Air Force, UTEP came out, turned the ball over three straight times to start the second half, so they had some trouble getting going out of the intermission. UTEP is trying to pick the zone with Davis. Nice. Stewart gets it done. Nice little jump shot by Stewart, who now has six points. 39-35, back to a four-point lead. Bobrin finally gets it. He was fouled beforehand on the entry. Is it Foster who gets it? David Hall making the call. No, he's going to give it to Antonio Davis. Davis now with three. This becomes so crucial. You got to be aggressive to play down here in El Paso, and their big guys traditionally get in foul trouble. Antonio must sit out a while, and I, I thought he was off to his best start of the tournament in the early going. My mistake, it's not three. That's his fourth. Unofficially, I had him for three. Now he's really in foul trouble. Has to sit down. And I imagine he'll be on that bench for quite some time. Bobrin foolishly gives it up. Tried to put the ball on the floor. Stewart drives, and he's fouled. The block will go on Troy Bow. That's a good call by Hall, because a lot of times, officials will take the easy way, and if a guy goes down, he takes the takes it in the truck they'll call it you got to watch the feet here referee the defense that's what this guy does actually Bobrin I have to apologize to him a little bit he tripped over the foot of Foster that's why he lost control and here at the other end going coast to coast Stewart gets himself to the line and you saw what Hall saw he refereed what the defense did not the offense that's the key Prince with five points, five assists last night in the win over Air Force, which was not a thing of beauty, but as Norm Ellenberger said after the ball game, they don't give us points on style. All that counts is the bottom line and whether you get to the championship game. Besides that, I think what Reggie Minton told him earlier, it's unpatriotic to beat the Air Force. I think that affected the play for a while. <laughs> That's a great line. There were a lot of great lines at that luncheon yesterday. And by the way, in case you missed it, our own Irv Brown honored in the uh, Court of Honors by the Western Athletic Conference here in El Paso last night. Troy Bow working it around to Gaines for three. And Van Dyke, big rebound. Here comes Stewart. Good numbers. Look out. You know what? He can show some folks that Bo isn't the only guy that can go coast to coast. That was lovely. It was a two-point ball game. Back out to a seven-point lead now as the Miners have reeled off five straight points. Van Dyke had a big rebound. Now he's up there in his face, and that, he's got to play with Davis with the four. Stewart comes out of the pack, gets it to Hall, who gets it to Maxi. Bow's the only one back, and he cannot stop Marlon Maxi. Excellent transition. <laughs> Bow is limping. And if he is limping, 
the Rainbows are in trouble. He has been their offense tonight with 14 points, the only player for Hawaii in double figures. Seems to be all right, though. The question is, are the Bows, they're down by nine with 16, 18 left to go. Gaines for three. He's been long on every shot. It's been an eight-point run. It was 36-35 just a couple of minutes ago. But the UTEP Miners have shut down the Rainbows. Not a bad idea for UTEP to use some clock. They got foul problems with Davis. Foster's soft touch, his first bucket here in the second half. Riley Wallace needs a timeout. Boy, they answered the charge. They were up by two. Now look at it. It's 11. They are loving it here in El Paso as the Miners have gone on a tear. 15 minutes to go. There's a timeout on the floor. And look at the lead. I like wheeling and dealing and a penthouse view. Dressing for success and knowing who's who. Bright lights, fast lane, my big time career. Meetings of the board and cold Coors beer. If you like your beer fresh, pure, and natural, head for the Rockies on the original taste of Coors. Have an ice cold Coors with a friend of yours. Coors, the Rocky Mountain legend. It's official. The Chevy truck is the number one selling truck in West Texas and Southern New Mexico. And right now, your Southwest Chevy dealer has some great reasons to buy, like $750 rebates or financing as low as 6.9% on any brand new Chevy full-size truck in our inventory. Plus, GM's three-year, 50,000-mile bumper-to-bumper warranty on all Chevy trucks. If Chevy trucks weren't dependable, Chevy trucks wouldn't be number one. So come in now to your Southwest Chevy dealer. Got a thirst. Give me the ball, give me the ball, give me the ball. You know what you need. Give me the ball. Fluids and minerals fast. Give me the ball. Energy for hard working muscles. Nothing better. Give me some of that Gatorade. Two big runs here to start the second half. The uh, UTEP Miners on a 9-0 run after the Bows had scored six straight points. And now the Miners on top, 46 to 35. And there's something. Davis gets his fourth, and they just band together as a ball club. They take off on this run. Troy Bow working with Lott, Houston, Bowbrin, and Smalls. Troy Bow needs some help. Somebody else is going to have to get hot here for Hawaii. And in a hurry before this one gets out of hand. Having a tough time finding a shot. Here's the shot by Lott. Short over the top of the rim. And there's Stewart. Stewart had four rebounds in the first half and has keyed the minor attack here in the second half. Definitely. That wasn't a good shot. Riley isn't very happy with that. They haven't been able to find many gaps in that 2-3. They had one solid move where they picked it apart underneath. And other than that, it's been tough. Look at this. Maxi with another maximum jam right there. The recipient of the gift as, as the shot by Van Dyke was way short. Maxi now in double figures with 11, and that lead is out to 13. 48 to 35. Smalls rifles it inside. Houston gets it back and finally scores. Houston now with seven. Well, they needed a big night out of him. He's got to come alive. There's plenty of time left. Just. 115 left in the ball game. Bows back to their man. Defense that Hawaii plays best, that man-to-man. -man. Here's Foster way outside. And Smalls up for another rebound. He's got that nine in the game. Not a good shot. Norm Ellenberger's going wild. You got a seven-footer, nobody underneath. You got things going your way, you're killing them. And he pops one from 25 foot. Well, UTEP has shown an inability to protect their leads very well. They had a tough time doing it at last night against Air Force. And there's the shot way outside again by Hawaii. Penetrate or punch it inside. That's what he's telling this guy. There it is. 
Look at the moves by Stewart. Finds the open Van Dyke, and Van Dyke is held before he can go up. Van Dyke talking a little trash out there with Troy Bow. He's a pretty quiet guy. All of a sudden, he gets emotionally involved there. All right, here it is. After the penetration, pretty good mugging that time. Bobrin caught him from behind, and Van Dyke wanted to put the blame on Troy Bow, the little guy. Can you imagine if Van Dyke goes home to Arizona this summer? Oh, they're not shooting. The crowd's going wild. And he, anyway, Van Dyke comes back 30 pounds heavier. You think he won't be hard to handle? Guy's got the greatest natural shot blocking talent they've ever had here for a pup. Only Alonzo Mourning had more last year as a freshman. Wouldn't you like to have that problem putting weight on? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Foul was on Bobrin. It's his third. He's out of the ball game right now. McGuire back in there, number 41, as Bo fights his way through the screen. Stewart gets away. How come this guy just comes to life in a tournament uh, finale? He was so good last year. Lott working the baseline, using the glass. Nice reverse shot by Phil Lott. He's got some ability, did a good job. There's a solid pick by Hall. It's getting tough here in El Paso, taken away and a foul call down low against the Bows. Well, right now it's a Prince Stewart show. Guy wasn't very highly recruited. I think only Moorhead State wanted him. Another of those guys, UTEP finds. They'd like a shot here. <laughs> the officials are saying, no, we're going to let you inbound it. <laughs> Let's pick it up. Here's Prince, and he really is taking charge. Goes up right here, and the foul came early. It's a good call. Was not in the act of shooting. And that's only the third team foul on Hawaii. And so they put it in play. A fresh 45 seconds, 12.50 left to play. 11-point lead for the Miners, who are in control at this point. I think the key here for Norm is substitution. That's a bad pass. Real bad pass. And Lott tries to make him pay. Stewart gets back, and it's off the hands of Phil Lott. The right call, no question about it. Riley and Nargan, they just lose it. They are trying the patience of Riley Wallace. Here it is. He just lost it. Bill Lott has had a couple of chances to make things happen here in the second half. And once again, here's a good substitution by Norm Ellenberger. There's very few who do it better. I don't care how long he's been away as a head coach. He's got his end one there. He can't afford to get Foster and Davis both in serious foul trouble. Foster has a tendency to reach. Davis has already got four. Davis got went out early, yeah. He went out many minutes ago. Has not played much here in the second half, but they've still been able to hang on to that lead. And the strategy is let your guards go one-on-one. -on -one. Let this guy fight some gaps. There it is. Nice <laughs> run by Izenwa. Rims out. Izenwa tracks it down. Fights for it. And he's out. What do you like this kid here? He looks like he's going to the library with those glasses, and yet he gets in there and mixes it up pretty good. Houston mixing it up with him that time. Terry Houston picks up his third. Chris Gaines will check back in, but watch as Houston comes over and hacks him on the left arm. I have the feeling if this guy works hard all summer, he could be a pretty good player, don't you? Good shot blocker. Big, tall kid from Nigeria. Went to the New Mexico Military Academy, as you see Phil Lott on the bench there, getting a little bit of a uh, talking to by the coaching staff of Hawaii. Maxi going back to work. Cut off at the baseline. Takes it back out. McGuire does a nice job battling, and here come the Bows, down by 11. Houston with some room to work. And I'll tell you what, the Miners came up and met him at the peak of his leap. This has been the main man. Stewart says, uh-uh, and he brings it back out. Troy Bow helps up Henry Hall, who'd gone down. That quiets the crowd a little bit, crowd wanting a foul call. Great shooter, Henry Hall, squared off against Gaines. Hall wants it, doesn't get it. McGuire's got it. And the Miners stuck on the dime again, but so are the Bows, who trail by 11. They've been down by as many as 13. They had cut that lead down to two at 37-35, having gone on a 6-0 run. Bo can't do anything about it there. Ben Smalls with the ticky-tack foul reaching in. He picks up his third. Not a good one for Vincent. Oh, he's got to beat him on the dribble. He can't shoot him from the outside right now. That's the situation. 10.57 to go in the ball game. Timeout on the floor. Still an 11-point lead for the Miners. 
The National Business Employment Weekly, published by the Wall Street Journal. It's all you need besides your own ability to land and do well in the kind of job you've been looking for in a part of the country you'll enjoy at a salary you can be proud of. It's all you need. Get the National Business Employment Weekly at your newsstand or order by credit card and get eight issues by first class mail for $35. Call 800-228-6266. 800-228-6266. The National Business Employment Weekly. It's official. The Chevy truck is the number one selling truck in West Texas and Southern New Mexico. And right now, your Southwest Chevy dealer has some great reasons to buy. Like Vista Chevrolet's $750 rebates. Or clip our coupon from the newspaper for an additional $850 off on any new half-ton Chevy truck. One coupon per truck in hurry. This offer ends March 31st. Only at Vista Chevrolet. Chevy trucks are number one. Come drive one today at your Southwest Chevy Geo dealer. <laughs> Everywhere I go for prices, everybody's going for the great fresh taste of Price's Dairy Foods. Because when you reach for the little bird on the mailbox, you know you're going with the only brand good enough to be called Price's, the Southwest's favorite dairy brand. And don't forget to go for Price's Ice Cream. Our old-fashioned secret recipe makes Price's Ice Cream the one that's big on flavor. All right, let's pick it up. Some of the action. Look how aggressive the boards are. And Vincent Small's going to reach in and grab an arm. Ivan Tate nails him. Big 11-point lead. This guy's trying to get his ball club back in it. Riley Wallace giving Ivan Tate a blast during that timeout. Not happy with the situation of his ball club, which is fighting for its first Western Athletic Conference Tournament Championship. Well, right now, he's dialing 911 because he needs some help. Somebody's got to take over. Chris Gaines has got to get into the ball game. Is scoreless so far here in the second half. Was scoreless in the first half last night. Has had a tough tournament. This guy has played well, though, in the whack. Oh, he can shoot him. McCall is down. He's rare, really slow to get up. Boy, Foster can shoot. 12 points here tonight. Had eight in the first half, four in the second was averaging 14 points per game coming in, in the tournament play. As far as I'm concerned, he's on my all-tournament team. Yeah. Keep in mind, Vahe has beaten UTEP twice, but they didn't see that 2-3 zone the entire game like they have today. Back to a 13-point lead. Large, matches the largest lead of the night for UTEP. Bobrin back in there working with three fouls. Still tough to find a good shot. Tough shot by Gaines, and a Zenwa with the rebound. And look at him clear some space. Yeah, he did. <laughs> All right, they want to bring it back outside now. Ellenberger's really taking over. He's got the harpoon in. He wants to bend it right now. Use some clock. Miners are poised to blow this thing wide open. They're on top by 13, looking for their largest lead of the night right here. And Ellenberger's got the whip. Look at him. He's, he's up. You know, you would think when you got a bulge like this that uh, the coach going to relax. Uh-uh, he's seen the lead fade many times. He'll use all the clock. It's down to 12. Saw that lead fade last night against the Falcons, who came back. Hall for three. And McGuire really battling for the ball. Here comes Bo. Two on three. Squares up. Too strong off the back of the iron. Gaines has got it. Gaines has got to get involved. Instead, it's McGuire with the shot. All right, they'll press now. McGuire, first two of the ball game, and the Bows pick him up in the backcourt. Get it to a dribbler and get away from him. There it is. Stewart has done a sensational job here tonight. 11 points, had four rebounds in the first half, and has really run this club here in the second act. Got to pass and move. That's what they're hollering from the UTEP bench. The only problem here, when you use some clock when things have been going good, if you miss a couple of shots, somebody comes down, hits a tray, they're back in it. There's a good cut. Nice entry pass. Knocked out of bounds. The crowd wants a foul on Chris Gaines. Well, he was riding him just a little bit. Just as bad. <laughs> Had his saddle out, was ready to go. <laughs> Get you back off my hands, the guy was hollering. <laughs> Would you like to be a referee? Absolutely not. It's the easy. You're just like everybody else. Everybody thinks how tough that is. First of all, you're always paid. It's not commission, right? Yeah, but I don't, you don't care who a, wins or loses. Everybody here is rooting for a team. Somebody, but I, I don't look good in black and white stripes. Maybe that's it. Okay. 
Foster with a turnaround. Too short that time. Over Knocked the out back. of bounds and over the back. The foul call. Is it McCall who picks it up? Yes, it is. That's uh, number four on UTEP. Correction, they've got three on the board. First foul of the ball game on McCall. They've only got three team fouls up on the scoreboard against the UTEP Miners. Hawaii with five already. Can get it under ten here. Now they haven't shot it at all. So you got to do something else to dribble. Good entry nice. pass to Bobrin to McGuire. And McGuire with his second bucket. Yeah, and they've come back to back. Bows haven't quit. Nine-point lead, just under eight minutes to go, and Marlon Maxey will check in at the next dead ball opportunity for the Miners. Boy, you can bring a Maxey off the bench. Davis still over there on that bench. Talk about the luxury of depth. Big guys, too. Yeah. You don't find those on every street corner. They're hard to find. Larry Brown told me if he ever got back in the pros, this is when he was in Kansas, you can't have enough big guys. And that's exactly what he went for. Well, what is it Frank Layton says? You can't teach height. And there's the five. And you also will notice speed never has a bad day. <laughs> <laughs> that was on number 40. Good penetration by Stewart to McCall. Bobrin picking it up. Watch That's it right board. here. Excuse me, Eric, go ahead. No problem. Here it is. There's the penetration. The dish. Hit him on the arm. Houston back in for Bobrin. And McCall will step up to the line. Bobrin has four fouls. He has four. Houston has three. Gaines hasn't picked up any fouls here in the second half, but he hasn't scored either. Chris Gaines really struggling. And the Bows need him here in the final seven minutes, 24 seconds. McCall's first point of the second half now has seven. And there's so much speculation about the loser this game. Will they get a bid? Because you got BYU and CSU still alive. UTEP would rather not uh, place its fate in the hands of the selection committee right now. The Miners on top by 11 with 7.24 to play in the championship game. If you feel life's more interesting when you make a splash. It's the right beer now. If you feel a great beer starts with great water. It's the right beer now. Because you're the kind of person who likes to get to the bottom of things. Call for the silver bullet, the one that won't slow you down. Coors Light, it's the right beer now. What love for animals really means is concern for their health and their long life. I buy Hills Science Diet Pet Foods. They're formulated by veterinarians, experts who know that excesses in sodium and minerals and other nutrients can harm pets. And you can find Hills Science Diet Pet Foods at Valley Feed and Supply, along with everything else you need for your pet dog, cat, or bird. From rabbits to monkeys, supplies from leashes and collars to vitamins and feeding equipment, Valley Feed and Supply, with four convenient locations to serve the needs of any type animal. It's official. The Chevy truck is the number one selling truck in West Texas and Southern New Mexico. And right now, your Southwest Chevy dealer has some great reasons to buy. And Rudolph sells more Chevy trucks than all the other area Chevy dealers combined. Because we always have the biggest selection, great prices, and at Rudolph, it's our people who make the difference. Rudolph Chevrolet and the all-new Rudolph Auto Mall on North Mason. Chevy trucks are number one. Come drive one today at your Southwest Chevy Geo dealer. Well, it's one of my favorite features, and I'm sure it's one of yours, the WAC question of the week, the best WAC team ever. Well, the balloting going tonight, UTEP's way. Everything's going the Miners' way. Yeah, it seems to be that way. It ought to get involved, provokes a little thought, gets people off the couch. I like that. You ought to get <laughs> off the couch, huh? Absolutely. You ever call a 900 number? I do. Uh, a couple of 800 numbers. <laughs> I like questions like that, though. Troy Bow out there with Gaines McGuire, who's got the ball right there, looking inside for Houston, not open. Phil Watt loses the handle, gets it back, makes the unwise cross-court pass, and Bow really shoved Marlon Maxey. That's why Bow's going over to apologize. He knows the big guy's going to come back and get him if he doesn't. <laughs> That's well done. I think I'd go to McGuire. The last few minutes, it's gone sour for the Bows. I'd find McGuire. He showed some confidence and hit a couple. They have really controlled Gaines and Houston, the two big guns for Hawaii. 
Double Very. team there on uh, Houston who had to give it up. Well, they've done a great job with that zone defense. They've been very active, moving their feet. Hey, this could be Norm Ellenberger's last shot, his last raw. He knows it. He needs to get a job off of this season's effort. He's done a tremendous job. How'd you like to coach Don Haskins' team? I've made that point before. Tough. Not an easy job down here in El Paso. They liken it to the part that Dennis Hopper played in the movie Hoosiers. He got that second chance after being yep. down and out. And that's the situation Norm Ellenberger's in right now. Well, and for those who don't know what we're talking about, this man, Lobo Gate, it's a bad scandal. Let's pick this up here. Is a Zenwa comes over. Good timing, but look at the left arm. Definitely a foul. No doubt about it. Is Zenwa picks up his first with a fourth team foul on the minors. Houston shooting free throws, but not over the limit yet. They're not going to be in the one and one for some time. You know, as a part of that, the people behind the basket, they feel pretty good. They're up waving their arms. I see some young people. I see some old people very much involved. They think that this guy can't concentrate. Used to have the minor maniacs back there in Viking helmets and swords and the whole getup. They don't have that anymore, but they've got enough to distract even the best free throw shooter. Houston finally nails the second one. He's got eight points, but that is well below his average. Izenwa back out. Not a good pass. Oh, had a hand on it. Van Dyke comes up with it, working with Maxi. And from behind, Phil Lott picks up the foul. Bad pass. The Miners get away with one. They dodge a bullet. Over the limit to Bose. This is one of those days that Riley Wallace wishes his parents had never met. <laughs> it is not going his way. That one. <laughs> He's having a tough night. His ball club is not this guy, Riley Wallace. And we got a timeout on the floor called by the Miners. Norm Ellenberger wants to talk it over with his ball club. A 10-point lead for the Miners. A 10-point deficit for the Bows. 640 left to play in this one. If you feel life's more interesting when you make a splash. It's the right beer now. If you feel a great beer starts with great water. It's the right beer now. Because you're the kind of person who likes to get to the bottom of things. Call for the silver bullet, the one that won't slow you down. Coors Light, it's the right beer now. Wow, this party's big. Hi, I'm John Hunter with Y96 Radio. And I'm Jerry Murphy from Channel 7 at Disneyland's big 35th anniversary celebration. Listen to Y96 and watch Channel 7 for your chance to win a family vacation to the biggest party in Disneyland history. You'll fly on Delta Airlines and stay at the beautiful Anaheim Hilton and Towers. Just listen to Y96 and watch Channel 7 to win. This party is big. It's Disneyland big. Three of today's biggest stars from motion pictures, music, and television together for one remarkable movie. I have a weakness. I like to lose control. Meryl Streep, Tracy Ullman, Sting. I'm looking for a father. I want to have a child. In a world of plenty, they wanted more. For the first time on television, plenty. UTEP on top by 10. The Miners 14 and 3 in the history of this tournament. They're the only host school to have ever won the championship on their home floor. That was back in 1984. They've won the title three times overall, gone to the NCAA's six straight years. A great history down here in El Paso, and they're living up to it tonight. No question about it. What's going through Norm Ellenberger's mind right now is when do I bring Davis back in? 6.40 left in the game. He's been sitting out forever, and you, you really have to uh, wait for the opportune time. My guess is if they get it down to six, you see him. Here's Van Dyke, who came off the bench in the first half against the Falcons last night. Really gave them an offensive lift. Had eight points, five rebounds. Misses the free throw, though. Boy, that big horse gives them a fresh 45, and that's what's important now. Time is of the essence for the Hawaii Rainbow Warriors. A little bit more than six minutes to go. Six minutes for them to do something about this 10-point deficit. 
Here's Stewart, who's had seven points in the second half, 11 for the ball game. Feeds the post, and the post delivers. Now Foster with 14. Nothing fancy in the box, powered up. Foster's got his average, 14 points per game. And the Bulls have got to start taking some three-point shots, giving it up. Houston that time when Houston looked like he had the shot. Gets fouled, ball doesn't go down, he's got a chance. To get it to 10. Foster picks up his third, at least by my count, and we'll show it to you one more time. But I thought Houston had a shot right there. That was before we picked it up. Here's Gaines going in among the trees. Gets hit on the arm. Good free throw shooter. In the first half, the Bows shot 70% from the line. But they can ill afford to miss any other free throws down the stretch if they're going to get back into this ball game. And that, by the way, was the first point of the second half for the leading scorer on this ball club, Chris Gaines, who now has eight. In all honesty, though, this is UTEP's to lose, not Hawaii's to win. That's just the way the game has come down. Miners. This guy really sparked it, Carl. Oh, yeah. Stewart really did his job when Davis got his fourth foul. The first ten minutes of the second half, he just took this ball game over. See what kind of movement they get. It hadn't been as good as when they went nuts and really scored. Foster way out high has it slapped away by McGuire who's all over it Foster can move with the ball though he's all right if he doesn't get up you don't travel look at that Stewart gets it over to Maxi. 14 seconds on the shot clock nice tell you what for a seven footer old Greg Foster's not a bad point guard I'm telling you something if Greg Foster suddenly asks himself this question can I make myself a lot of money the answer is yes they're giving guys seven foot millions of dollars. Millions and millions look of dollars. This pass goes up, boom. Oh, I like that. No look pass. So Van Dyke's back up to the line where he missed the front end of the one and one just moments ago. Looking to give his team an even larger lead. The Miners on top by 10 right now with 515 left to go. Miners trying to make it seven consecutive NCAA appearances. And Riley Wallace trying to get to the big dance for the first time with the Bows. Would that be something for the island? The bye is 34% now from the field. That's tough. And that's just about what the, the Miners have been holding teams to in this tournament. In the first two games, the Miners' opponents shot 36% from the floor, so the Bows are finding out what the Lobos found out, what the Falcons found out. Done it with a 2-3, two, too. That's what I find amazing. There's the foul. Prince Stewart picks it up. It's only his second. That was our number 13, Prince Stewart. And the sixth on the UTEP Miners. Still not over the limit right now. But it was a shooting foul, so Gaines should be at the line. Stewart will come out. He'll sit out about two minutes. Avai, in my opinion, has one last guess. They got to turn it into an alley fight. They got to go, make the officials make the call. You got nothing to lose right now. You're down 12, and Foster's killing you. Man with the ball, Troy Bow had 12 points in the first half. Only two, though, here in the second. Lotz got it. Left-handed shot. It was on the rim when it was touched. Riley Wallace is screaming for a call. Here's Hall to Maxi. Maxi with the slam again, his third jam of the ball game. Big play. Stewart back at the scores table. 436 left. And a timeout on the floor with 435 left to play here in El Paso. Largest lead so far, 14 points. UTEP 60, Hawaii 46. We'll be right back. For the man who really loves his golf, nothing will stand in his way when he wants to play. He'll play anywhere. Trouble, however, can be encountered on any golf course. Hazards like heavy rough. Golf Digest magazine can help. Every golfer wants to improve, but the golfer who improves most reads Golf Digest. For him, sand shots are easy. 
Golf Digest's instructional articles can even see you through the perils of a water hazard. Your favorite course may be less treacherous than this one, but probably no less demanding. Wherever you play, play better with Golf Digest. Get a full year of Golf Digest for $16.77. Call 800-248-1200 now and get a free half-hour instructional video with your paid subscription. Call 800-248-1200 now. You still have time to exercise your right to vote on the best WAC team ever in the question of the week. UTEP running away with it right now. Wyoming about 12 percentage points behind. Utah in there, New Mexico in there. If you want to get in on the vote, time's running out. Get on the phone call, 1-900-454-0556 and vote for your favorite team. You know, you wind down an amazing year if you think about it. You got one coach in a whack who needs surgery, Roger Reed. You got two others that haven't been able to coach their team, Rick Majerus and Don Haskins. How many times do you see something like that in one season? It has been remarkable. And who do you vote for for Coach of the Year? Reggie Mitten does a great job getting his team as far as they went. How about Riley Wallace, Roger Reed? How about Norm Ellenberger with this team here? Job. I vote for Roger Reed because no one, and I mean no one, gave him a chance to do anything. He had a shot to go to the NCAA. They'll for sure get an NIT berth. Nobody gave him a shot. They win 20 games. I'd like to split it between Roger Reed and Riley Wallace myself. Ever the diplomat. Inside. Nice, nice. Oh, Smalls has it taken right out of his hands. It's been that kind of night. And Prince Stewart back in. He got to sit out exactly 47 seconds. Now it boils down to ball handling. The bow's got to foul him. Simple as that. You can't let him run it off. Four minutes left to go exactly in this one. 60 to 46, a 14-point lead. In the old days, Haskins would just give it to Tiny Archibald. And you never get it back. You keep it for 10 minutes. The thing about fouling the Miners is they made their free throws down the stretch last night, particularly Foster, who misses the shot right there. Here you, comes Bo. And Bo has really been silent in the second half thanks to the Miners. They've played sensational defense. There's a nice tap. Great tap right there. I think it was small. you got to alley fight it, though, if you're the Bo. Five. Cost you right there. This thing isn't over. Norm Ellenberger know it isn't over. Shoot it quick and then foul somebody. Look at Norm. You think he believes this game is over? It's going to be the longest three minutes and 26 seconds of his life. Before this thing is done, 12-point lead. But the Bows have got some three-point guns. They ought to think about popping it right now. Gaines looks hesitant. He's turning down shots. Can't turn that one down. In and out. Tough luck shooting that. Right back in it. Smalls back up and is fouled. Could be down to 10, Carl. A lot of time left. 57% shooter at the line, though. But University of I cannot shoot it from the outside. Here comes Antonio Davis back in. Maxi will come out. Ball goes out. Look at him hit the glass. Maxi's done a job. Second leading score on the floor for the Miners right now. 13 points. There's Van Dyke who picked up his fourth. And Smalls at the line. Now, a 57% shooter, but he did hit three free throws in that first half. They came out and they, they had that 6 0 run. They get right back in the game, and Stewart took over and broke their will. You're exactly right. Misses both. Bobrin had it, lost it. Bad. Boy, Riley, I'm very happy with that. Ought to slow it up. Oh, my goodness. That's an intentional foul. That means two and possession. All right, Davey Hall going over there, making sure there's not a fight. There it is. Boy, I'll tell you, Bo lassos him. Not a very big kid, but I'll tell you what, he is strong. Yes, he is. He stopped Van Dyke from going anywhere. Stopped him in his tracks and then went over and said, hey, pal, sorry, just part of the ball game. Troy Bow doing everything he can. He's the leading scorer tonight. In fact, he is the only Hawaii player in double figures. Sixty-five percent shooter at the line. Van Dyke nails it, now has five in the contest. And Carl, that lead is up even more. Carl, I really like this guy, though. You know, he doesn't start. 
I just, I believe the next two years, this guy is just going to get better and better. He's got a nice little touch. As I said, he misses that one, but he can block shots. Seems to keep his cool. I never see him sweat. He's like a sophomore in high school. If he'll put on a little weight, he could be dominating. What's the old cliche? They don't uh, rebuild, they reload down here, and they're going to do it next year with Van Dyke coming back. Is Zenwa comes back. Sure, they're going to lose Foster and Davis, but there's some pretty good talent on this team. What's amazing, guy who called five times down here, Gary Payton, and they didn't have a scholarship. He, they had him talked into walking on. Tim Floyd was going to get Gary Payton. Isn't that amazing? He's only the best guard in the West. He's either number one or number two, depending on which scout you talk to. Oh, a lot of people right. think he's number one in the country. I'll tell you what. Folks back uh, east may not agree. They think Ramil Robinson, top guard in the country. But a lot of folks in the West think that uh, Gary Payton's number one. Stewart's not bad either, though. Nice shot by Stewart at the other end off the glass. He now has 13. And Van Dyke, I believe, is fouled out of the ball game. That should be five. They're standing here. They know this kid played effectively. Had some fouls to give. He gave them. Finishes the night with five points. Had eight points last night. He comes out, and Marlon Maxey getting the last few words of advice from Norm Ellenberger coming in. Norm Ellenberger went to Butler University. Two sports star. So up to the line is Terry Houston, who's had a frustrating night. He scored 21 the last time he played in this building against the Miners. Had 16 out in Honolulu when the Bows beat UTEP back in January. But tonight, only eight points. Riley Wallace worked for Larry Little. Get away. It's got, to the, got to be the most frustrating feeling in the world for a coach to bring his team this far. And, then see it all just kind of disappear. They've been on the road forever. That's tough. Look at this kid. Big, active kid. Henry Hall bringing it up against Gaines. Goes down, and there's a foul on Hall using the elbow to clear Gaines away. At least in the opinion of Gordon Burke. That's right. That's the only opinion that counts right now. <laughs> Here it is. Watch the elbow. There it is. It's a solid, solid call. He refereed the defense. There was a reason the Gaines went flying. 63-49. Gaines for three. Gaines finally heard from here in the second half. He's now got 11. 11-point 11 game. I'm not sure you want that pass. Not a wise decision. Smalls That's almost lost it. Yeah, Maxie commits the foul in the backcourt. A now, foolish pass to get it started. And all of a sudden, three seconds tick off the clock. You got a chance to get it down to nine. That's three possessions. Are you kidding me? You think Norm Ellenberger isn't going wild? Exasperated would be a good word. Trying Keep to get the attention of his team to call a timeout after they get it back. No, they want a timeout right now. We'll Carl. keep it right here, though. Well, I was going to mention the game you did, just so you, you don't know what's going on with guys. Hawaii has a co-championship. All they've got to do is get the basketball inbounds, and they can't do it. Anything is possible. Last week, you're talking about up in Laramie. Last week in Laramie, and uh, all they had to do was get it in, and they had their, yeah. their senior guard, Chris Gaines, with one of the toughest passes, by the way, that you can make in college basketball, although you can use the backcourt in college basketball for the entry pass, but still, tough pass to make. Tim Bro intercepts it, gets it, goes in, gets to the free throw line, and all of a sudden, that co-championship is uh, down the drain. Exactly. So this thing is not over. You're looking at three possessions. We saw the University of Utah really fight back in, in their first round, or their uh, quarterfinal game, I should say, with BYU, and the three-pointer was big. If the Miners can hang on, though, to this big lead that they've got right now, and it's uh, 11 points, 63 to 52, it'll be one of the biggest wins here in the tournament. I believe that uh, five of the first seven games played in this tournament were decided by six points or less. So it's been really a well-played, very closely played tournament, and Norm Ellenberger trying desperately to hang on and get his team into the NCAAs. Hold on to the basketball, make your charity pitches. That's what he's telling them. 
for her life. You got to deny. You got to look to pick up a charge. And then you got to foul. I just don't think you can let him run off 40, 41 seconds and shoot it. You got to foul him. Take your chances on the line. So we should be prepared for a little bit of a chess match here, a little bit of back and forth. It always comes down to this in college basketball. Coaches take over. Do you like that? Not really. Not the, the, the part of the coaches taking over. I'm not crazy about the last two minutes of the basketball game. They take two days. There has to be a better way. Well, if there's look. a better way, the Bows would like to find it right now. They miss the front end, and they give up the basketball. Should hold up. Free throw shooting, just one of many problems tonight. They try to foul, they can't, and McCall skies for the slam. See, he's my favorite jumper in the world. <laughs> he's shot from a tramp. He's got rockets, doesn't he? Yeah. Gains for three, nails it. All of a sudden, he got a wake-up call. Riley wanted a foul. Oh, look at this. They don't get back. All alone, and Maxi with his fourth slam dunk of the ball game. But that was an easy one, a gimme. Nobody got back, though. The Bows were celebrating Gaines' three-point play. Houston working inside. Rejected. Maxi with the rejection. Two on one. Three on one. Foster finishes it off. And that'll finish it right there. UTEP is going to the NCAA tournament. 104 left to go. 69-55 drills it from outside. The three-point shot. They need the, three, the timeout, and the Bows didn't see their coach. And here we go, two on one again. They break the pressure. Maxi again. They missed the timeout. 44 seconds left to go, and this one is all over for all intent and purposes. How about that? What a save. Henry Showtime. Hall. Showtime. Norm wants a timeout. He wants to get some guys in there. They don't see it. He wanted to get some guys in there so you can get a hand. Let your seniors get a hand. They're dancing in the aisles here at the Special Events Center in El Paso, Texas. And Riley Wallace is looking for the plane ride home. Well, they got nothing to be ashamed of. If you can't shoot it, you're dead. Look at Riley. He says, I'm wanting a timeout. This guy's got to get a job. I hope somebody out there is looking for a coach. Gives this guy a shot. You deserve a second chance in life. All right, let's pick it up. This was showtime. Hall passes because this is the best jumper in the world. Pound for pound, inch for inch. McCall. And he can flat get you out of his seat. But once again, hey, doesn't a guy deserve a shot? Lobagate was a disaster. It was terrible. It was off, but it's over and done with. The man can coach. The man deserves a chance. I just hope somebody will give him that. Happened 10 years ago. Norm Ellenberger, his program crumbled at the University of New Mexico. It's a well-documented story. And there you see it. UTEP has scored eight points in the last minute to blow this thing wide open. All right, now the reason, once again, for the timeout, people say why, simply to get some kids in so they can say that they played. Gillis is in for the Bows, but also to give your seniors a well-deserved hand. So they come back out with Foster and Davis. Right. The two seniors, Arlandis Rush, a senior as well. Rush played at South High School in Denver. Gillis is in. And most of the seniors out of the lineup now for Hawaii. And the Bows can only hope now for an NIT bid. A bitter pill to swallow, though. Came so close to winning the regular well, season co-championship. Here's Lott from long range, and McCall's got it. And we've just been informed that Greg Foster is the most valuable player in this tournament. Carl, I hope that uh, the NCAA will, will give him a shot as far as the Bows. You know, you, you just don't know what goes on there. There are four teams people feel have shot. All right, here comes the sub now. They want to get a kid out. The Zenwa will come in. They'll let him give him a hand here. That's Merle Heimer, I believe, coming in. Another seldom seen player here in El Paso, Texas. He takes over for Greg Foster and listen to the hand. There's the MVP.
Congratulations all around on that UTEP bench. Bitter disappointment, though, over on the Hawaii sideline, as Vince Smalls can only think of what might have been. You speculate immediately, will UTEP go to Long Beach? Salt Lake? Incredible when you consider the score here. Riley Wallace looking on. But Davis only four points tonight and did not play the majority of this the second half. Was in foul trouble early. Orlando's rush on for Antonio Davis who will get a standing ovation as well. Antonio got the rest most of the second half. Hall just killed him. <laughs> you got to be strong to hang on to Henry Hall when he jumps in your lap. Jeff Bowling on the all-tournament team. Troy Bowe, Prince Stewart, Foster. There it is. All over here at the Special Event Center in El Paso, Texas. But quite frankly, for all intent and purposes, it was all over about five or six minutes ago. Prince Stewart took over and broke open a close ball game midway through this second half. It was a two-point game, and then the Miners went on an 11-0 run, and that was all she wrote. The two teams out on the floor congratulating each other, but the UTEP Miners have won for the fourth time in the history of this tournament the championship in postseason play. There's your final score, 75-58. to 58. Not close. Here tonight, the Miners are the champions. We'll be back here in El Paso in just a moment on the TSI Sports Network. I like cruising downtown in my limousine. Big skyscrapers and the nightlife scene. The rush hour traffic, we get around here. Hot fashion ladies and cold Coors beer. If you like your beer fresh, pure, and natural, head for the Rockies and the original taste of Coors. And tap an ice cold Coors with a friend of yours. Coors, the Rocky Mountain legend. <laughs> Tennis Magazine covers everything you want to know about tennis, from instruction to equipment, pro tennis to resorts. If tennis makes you feel good, a subscription to Tennis Magazine will make you feel great. Subscribe to Tennis Magazine now, only $9.97 for 12 issues. Call 800-228-6600. We'll include two free booklets on improving your game. Tennis Magazine. Call 800-228-6600 now. If you're going to hunt for investment bargains, if you want to make sound investment decisions in today's volatile market, the most powerful, reliable tool you can use is information. That's right, information. And now every month, Standard & Poor's Stock Guide will bring you information of a scope you've never seen before. This big, unique, 268-page stock guide provides you with essential facts and figures on more than 5,000 listed and unlisted stocks. You'll find out about their earnings, prices, dividends, company products, over 40 revealing characteristics. The guide also covers mutual funds, feature articles, and much much more. This is the famous stock guide many professional investors and brokers consider the information source. And over 375,000 smart investors turn to it every month. Now you can use it as a solid foundation for your investment strategy. Yes, you can receive six months of Standard & Poor's Stock Guide for only $43, a real saving over the regular subscription price. Simply call this toll-free number, 800-228-6600. That's 800-228-6600. Send no money now. We'll bill you later. Tonight's Western Athletic Conference Championship game has been brought to you by Coors, the Rocky Mountain legend. If you like your beer fresh, pure, and natural, head for the Rockies and the original taste of Coors. Quite simply, pandemonium here in El Paso, Texas, as the crowd still on its feet cheering the hometown UTEP Miners who have won 75 to 58. I thought it was kind of nicer of the hand that they gave the uh, Hawaii Rainbows who are completing a 19-game road trip, and they completed in disappointing style. Well, yeah, they, I'm sure that everybody appreciates what uh, they've done. It's really been an interesting season. We talked about the coaches who were hurt and everything. It looked like we were going to have a four-way tie for the championship. It doesn't work out that way. BYU and CSU share the title. They're not here tonight. Hawaii and UTEP uh, go head-to-head, -head, and UTEP gets the automatic qualifying berth. They played exceptional basketball. 
three minutes into the second half, they were in big trouble. Stewart took over. Miners were struggling midway point through the season, but you said it, Irv. You couldn't believe that they wouldn't be here at the finish. Well, hey, they've got a scary front line. They have a guy who took over for Don Haskins who knows what it means and, and knows what it takes to get him there. And you just felt if their guards would play just a little bit, they'd be all right. Well, tonight, one of their guards was great, Prince Stewart. Been a pleasure working with you all season. We'll see Same you next here. year. Thank you, Carl. And we'll see you next year. The story here tonight, the UTEP Miners winning the Western Athletic Conference postseason championship. The Miners are going to the NCAA dance. For Herb Brown, I'm Carl Larkey saying thanks for your time this time. Till next time, we'll see you next year, everybody. We've got it all together here on 7. Thanks for being with us. It's official. The Chevy truck is the number one selling truck in West Texas and Southern New Mexico. And right now, your Southwest Chevy dealer has some great reasons to buy. And Rudolph's the 